Just jam it. Just move jam it, it into this Thursday. Get the blood pumping. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Pump, pop the jam, pump it. We might be using jam in the show. I don't know. I don't know why, why are you laughing at that. Uh, welcome to it. My name is Graham Richards. My name is Jamie Dombek. A very good morning to all of you South Africans who are waking up on this feel-good kind of day. Yeah, we haven't completely lost our minds. It's just it's getting closer to the weekend. It's that Thursday vibe. We've, we've got the feels. We've got Indie Dog in the house today. You're going to be performing for us, which is going to be amazing. So we're going to take you kind of elevate things just a little bit but we're gonna have a lot of fun as tech meets art this Thursday on Express so we're gonna be exploring how VR can assist in job creation how sign language can be made easy with newly invented tech and glasses and finally we go crazy over the new Samsung Neo QLED TV it this. is we can't insane. wait to reveal to you just how beautiful it is and who better than Grant Hines to test it out with a brand and you game. He's excited. He couldn't it's, sleep last night. It's one of those things where you look at it and you think, my eyes have just improved. Like, it, it's an instant contact lens in your eye because it's so beautiful. So, yeah, it's going to be a techie turn this Thursday where we're going to have a lot, of, a lot of fun. We're going to be in the kitchen. We're going to be cooking. We're going to be dancing. And we're going to be showing a lot of self-love. It's a self-love Thursday. And there's a man that I, I can see. He's loving himself this morning. And it's warranted because he's a lovely guy. Good morning. Good morning. morning. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. I hope you're doing well this morning. My name's Carl Wasty. Welcome to Expresso. And you know what? I think when you love yourself, you start just loving other people. You have that enablement that happens within yourself, which is great. And I know Whitney said it, George said it, but uh, to love yourself is the greatest love of all. And that's what we want you to do on social media today. So get to the uh, Facebook page and check this out. All we want you to do is tell me about that one thing that you love about yourself. And it's not arrogance. It's not you, you gloating or, or doing anything like that. It's just saying, this is what I acknowledge as my unique selling point. And I love it about myself and I think it's so beautiful we cannot wait to hear you a message and of course comment on that sort of thing personally I actually just love the fact that I love my job so much it's the most amazing thing when I can wake up and I, I'm not like have that sort of like oh I have to do this again it's the best thing to actually love what you do and I love that about myself the fact that you can have that passion for every single thing that you connect with which is fantastic so Start loving yourself on the Expressive Facebook page. We'd love to see your comments and we'll read them out a little bit later. But now, somebody who I can see, when she smiles at the camera right now, giving you news, you can tell that she loves herself. Here's Jamie. Thank you, Mr. Wasty. Yes, time to have a first look at those news headlines. We start with your national news. South Africa has reported the highest number of new coronavirus infections in more than four months, indicating that the country is officially entering the third wave. Now, in the past 24 hours, 5,782 cases have been reported and 110 people have passed away. Meanwhile, the head of the Special Investigation Unit, Andy Motibi, says more than 100 cases related to corruption in the acquisition of of COVID-19 protective equipment have been referred to the National Prosecuting Authority for possible prosecution. The unit is investigating allegations of corruption of some 14.3 billion rand. Staying with your local news, the Cape Town Metro Police's K-9 unit has bid farewell to two of its four-legged members after serving with distinction for eight years. Now, K-9's Flynn and Kubla Khani both boast proud service records. Flynn's biggest bust was in 2015 when he led officers to hand grenades, mortar and R5 magazines, as well as ammunition buried in Montana in Cape Town. Now, his K-9 colleague, Kubla Khani, was also lauded for her exceptional temperament and intelligence. She she was, however, injured during training but remained a team member. Now, both have been adopted by their handlers. Moving further abroad with your international news, the International Criminal Court has requested Sudan to hand over one of the key people accused of war crimes and genocide in Darfur and an ally of, an ally of ousted President Omar Hassan al-Bashir. The accused, Ahmed Haroun, requested to be sent to The Hague, the court's headquarters, complaining that he would not receive a fair trial in Sudan. Bashir had for years resisted warrants issued against himself and four of his allies, including Haroun, over the conflict in Sudan's western region in which an estimated 300,000 people perished.
Staying with your international news as well, Israeli opposition parties have reached an agreement to form a new government that would end Benjamin Netanyahu's 12-year tenure as Prime Minister. Yair Lapid, leader of the centrist Yesh Atid party, announced that an eight-faction unity coalition had been formed. Now, moreover, Israel's parliament yesterday elected former centre-left politician Isaac Herzog as the country's new president, a role that is largely ceremonial but is also meant to promote unity among ethnic and religious groups. He will assume the presidency in July when Reuven Rivlin ends his seven-year term. And then South Africa's two-time Olympic gold medalist and three-time world champion who holds the South Africa women's record over every distance from 400 to 1,500 meter, 30-year-old Costa Semenya can proudly boast another feather in her cap. Now, she has bagged a BTEC degree in sports management from the Twane University of Technology, TAT. Now, after matriculating from Intema Senior Secondary School in Limpopo in 2008, Semenya opted to move to Port of Strum in two, 20, uh, 2015 where she earned a diploma in sports science from Northwest University. After this, she was enrolled for the above-mentioned BTEC at in 2018 and subsequently moved back to Pretoria after signing a deal as a sports ambassador for the institution. Semenya is one of South Africa's most accomplished athletes in any sport. She has juggled her studies and her athletic career for more than a decade while being locked in a lengthy court battle in an attempt to have controversial gender rules overturned. As of now, she's trying to qualify for this year's Tokyo Olympics in the 5,000 meter event after being prevented from competing in her specialist, the 800 meter distance. Well, on that note, that is where I leave your 6 a.m. news here, HG, with a first look at the sports. Insurance specifically designed for fearless women. Thank you so much, uh, Jamie. Let's kick it off with football this morning. Kaiser Chiefs kept their hopes of finishing in the Premier Soccer League top eight alive after a, what was in the end very hard for 3 2 victory over Golden Arrows at the FB Stadium last night. Uh, Michael Gumere opening the scoring in the 21st minute to give the visitors the lead. Then Lebohang Manyama netting the equaliser nine minutes later to make it one apiece. After challenging for the ball in the second half, Amakosi defender Eric Matojo scored an own goal to give Arrows the lead once again. But then Manyama stepped up, scoring a second and third goal to score the win for the Soweto Giants, who now move up to 10th in the standings. On to tennis, Serena Williams continued her bid for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title after easing into the third round of the French Open yesterday. The 39-year-old American beating Romania's Mihaela Bujanescu, ranked 174th in the world at the moment, 6-3-5-7-6-1. That happened last night. The former champion and seventh seed Williams will now meet fellow American Danielle Collins in the third round tomorrow. And then finally on to cricket as roughly 6,500 fans returned to the iconic home of cricket in London. It was New Zealand's debutant Devon Conway who stole the show with a brilliant unbeaten 136 on day one of their first test against England. The South African born Conway became just the sixth batsman to score 100 on test debut at Lords. The 29 year old anchored the visitors to 246 for three on that first day. Great Great start. Day two's action between England and the Black Caps will continue at Lord's Cricket Ground from 12 p.m. South African time today. Well, that's where we leave our sport for now. Let's get our first gander at the weather. Thank you to each of you who take the time to share your sunrise views with us. It is really a great way to start our day. And this morning we kick off with this gorgeous image of the sun casting a beautiful golden hue across the country from Abhishek Pudram from Durban. Eric Lottering, thank you to you in Bedford View in Gauteng. Also shared this stunning photo taken of the sun breaking through the clouds. Now, if you too would like to be featured during our sunrise segment, it's really simple. All you need to do is head over to the Expresso Facebook page to share your sunrise photos with us and you may just be featured on one of these weather segments. Now, we also have a growing community of international viewers who tune in daily via the Africa Channel and YouTube. And this morning we are heading to Sacramento, California. It is the largest city of Sacramento County and is the seat of the California legislature and the governor of California, making it the state's political center and a hub for lobbying and think tanks. Today, if you're in Sacramento area, you can expect a very warm day with plenty of sunshine reaching a maximum of 35 degrees Celsius. Now, the Weather Service has forecast heavy rainfall over the southern part of KwaZulu-Natal and also warned
of cold temperatures, especially in high-lying areas. It says the downpour may be, well, may cause localized flooding. Extremely cold temperatures, especially in high-lying areas in the Drakensberg, where it's currently snowing, can also be expected. Videos currently circulating on so social media show roads and vehicles uh, covered in snow in Hutu in Zululand, uh, where it last snowed in 2004. Forecaster Julius Maklango said the, rain, uh, the snowfalls over the area surrounding the Drakensberg are due to an upper system which is known as a cutoff low. He said after the cutoff low, they are expecting a cold front to move through today, followed by a ridging high-pressure system, which is also expected to bring in more cooler conditions over the province. The Department of Cooperative Governance in KwaZulu-Natal has meanwhile placed disaster management teams on high alert. Let's take a closer look at the temperatures across South Africa and starting with you, Polo Kwane, always 5 to 18 is what you can expect in your area. Bombela, good morning. 12 of you start off with, 19 a little later. Pretoria, 5 to 18. Johannesburg, 3 to 15. Maya King, 3 to 21. Klerkstorp, you max at just 17 from a low of 1. Kimberley, minus 1 this morning, believe it or not. Please stay warm. 18 later. Bloemfontein, a 1 to 20. Richards Bay, you can expect 8, and that rises to 20. Peter Maritzburg, 7 to 12, with a 60% chance of rain in your area. Durban, 80% chance of rain for you, 13 to 18. Umtata, a 60% chance of precipitation, 9 to 11. East London, 14 to 17. Also chance of rain in your area. Craddock, 6 to 13. Kabecha, 8 to 18. George, you can expect 8 your minimum to a maximum of 17 degrees Celsius. The Mother City, Cape Town, 9 to 19. Worcester, 5 to 21. Sutherland, 0 is where you start, but you can only go up from there. 15 max later. And then Uppington, 2 to 22. That's a wrap of your temperatures across the country. I'll have another report for you in the next hour. But for now, we've got something that's very, very special, and that's going to make your morning rock on Expresso. Oh, yes, indeed. Can you give me some strums? Can you give me some bass? Oh, yeah. This is not the sound of it, guys. You have to stick around for it. Indie Dog is here with us here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. So they're going to be sticking around for us. And we're going to find out more about their career and how they started all of this. But, baby, we're starting a band. We'll see you after this. Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on S3. Now, I did hype them up earlier on. They were formed in early 2018. Now, uh, Indie Dog is a four-piece band from Joburg that uh, delivers a trans-fixing mix of rock. They're bringing blues, they bring funk and folk, and having played in major venues and intimate festivals during their time, they are ready to dominate the local and international music scene. And we are sitting down with Seb Howarth and Kian Murray from the band to find out more about the journey please can we give them a warm yes, bring espresso in. welcome bring them out bring them out in, bring them out bring them out just in time. I was just telling Carl now, Loki, I feel like I should be part of the band. Do you think that that, that little strum move? You've got, you've got the look for it, at least. It'll Did fit you say right the look to both of us? Both of that, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Are we thinking bass, drums? I'm thinking backup dancer. Backup dancer, oh, the band, okay. and then from my side? 
Lead singer. Oh, Lead. stop it! <laughs> I do actually have a rock voice. You know that? You know that that whole Creed voice. Mm. Hello, my friend, we meet again. Go. Yeah, it would happen beautifully, but it's fine. <laughs> it's so nice to have you guys along for the ride. Honestly, it's so going nice to be fantastic. Yeah, thanks for having us. No, anytime. So, so indie dog is a very interesting name. Mm. Can can I start off with the name? You know, sure. d just like where did it come from? Because I know it is indie, but the dog part. I mean, you could have chose cat. That is true, <laughs> uh, although any cat doesn't quite sound as good as any no. dog, but uh, oh. I mean, obviously independent music uh, means a yeah. lot to the South African music industry and, and so on. Most of the South African musos are independent, so I happen to name my dog Indy and after that, we named our band Indie Dogs. Yes! Wow. <laughs> it's a fairly simple story. I love it. Yeah. And you speak about independent music. You also, you know, produce your own original music, which is a huge risk, but you perform this as well so well. Again, no one can do it like you guys. How does it feel to be able to create music after music and then it's still resonating with South African audiences? Uh, it's really good. Uh, like, it's a really nice feeling to know that the music is well received, you know, because we don't... When we're writing music, we don't sit there going like, okay, well, what are people gonna like, you know? Maybe if we play it like this, like people will really like that. Like, we play the music that we feel is gonna communicate, you know, and, and communicates what we want to communicate. And, uh, and with that resonating with people, you know, it's obviously, it's a great feeling to know that people are enjoying our sound, you know? It, I, I'm enjoying the sound. I heard, I heard a couple of the, the checks earlier. It's, it's going to be so good. But I, I just want you know, to go over to, to you. And I know that you guys have been keeping your hair intact throughout lockdown. Yeah. But how has the band been keeping intact and stimulated and creative? Yeah, so through lockdown, it was obviously tough for everyone. But for us, being creative people, it actually gave us time to like, hone in on our craft. And through WhatsApp and everything, we just kept like making music, sending each other ideas. And we actually came out with a song in lockdown yeah. called Moving On. We made a video. <laughs> yeah, we were fully, fully still into it. Yeah. And awesome. then let's talk about the other single, Fly High, also yeah. doing so good. Tell us about that process, how you created that song. Uh, so we, we were on tour in KZN uh, 2019. Huh? And, uh, we have like a, a segment of our show where we improv uh, and nice. we just basically jam out and, and see what happens kind of a thing. And, and Fly High started off as, as one of those jams. And, um, you know, as by the time we got to the end of that tour, we'd kind of worked out based on uh, the crowd response uh, to various parts of the song. Um, you know, the, by the time we got back, we pretty much had a complete song uh, from those improv jams on stage so it was it was really written with the crowd for the crowd you know oh that is that sounds cool i feel like we need to do that later i don't know improv sounds so good yeah it's, it's yeah. so just much jam fun. it out let's just yeah jam it why out. not let's do it yeah. so an, a full length album under your belt of course now are we looking at a second album and, and work around that in fact we actually have been to studio and we've done three tracks for a new album so it's on the way yes it's in the making is that an exclusive you yeah you Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just echo that around. But yeah, cool. we, we're busy working on the new material and it will be coming out very soon. Very cool. Yeah. Of course, major performances coming um, on the show today, but what can people expect? Where can people connect with you? Hit us up, hit us up with your socials. Uh, yeah, well, while we're down here in Cape Town, we're playing a, a bunch of small, safe venues. So, um, Harrington's tonight in Cape Town, Ellington's yes. tomorrow, Armchair uh, Theatre on Saturday. Um, those are the shows that we're playing here. Otherwise, we are on the bill for Misty Waters, um, provided obviously everything goes as planned and you know the festivals can happen and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then socials. Yeah, we are Indie Dog Band on all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, and at our website at indiedogband.com. And WhatsApp now, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Nice you know, yeah, that was that was very sharp, by the way. <laughs> very was it? And he almost gave it to you. Anyway, well, these guys will be performing for you a little later on the show, so do keep it locked. We'll be talking about a proper rocking performance where you're going to move your coffee table and start a mosh pit in your lounge, hopefully, with Indie Dog. Right, you on Expresso. Right, just need to get it out of my system. What's up, dog? What's up? Oh, 
<laughs> uh, you know what the best thing about kindness is? It is contagious. We've proven it on the show. What started as one woman feeding a few stray dogs on her way to work every morning has now very quickly morphed into a full-blown organization called AfriPaw. Now the team are committed to feeding, medicated, and treating pets in communities who need it most. And our very own Ryle, a very big dog lover, tagged along, and he joined the team at one of their monthly clinic days. What a beautiful day we've got here in Cape Town and out in the heart of Freigrond, which is arguably one of the oldest informal settlements in the Western Cape. And it hosts residents up to 90,000 in numbers and with that, thousands or more animals. Now that's why the AfriPaw Animal Welfare Team are out here to ensure these animals stay healthy and happy. So let's go see what's going on and if we can maybe lend a helping hand. Let's go find out. <laughs> It's so good to meet you and obviously seeing so much going on right here. There's so many dogs and cats and even a little small one over here. <laughs> what exactly is your team doing on the ground? So today we are running a pet clinic uh, which is free to the community of Freigrund and approximately 550 pets will come through the gates to receive primary health care um, over a period of about four hours. So we have the adult deworming station, we have the puppy station, we have the brushing station. Very Importantly, we have the hospital here behind me. With the support of Tears Animal Rescue, we vaccinate sterilized pets. We have two vets here today who are volunteering their time. And then finally, we have our food station. So every pet that comes to the clinic today goes home with a bag of food. Today's food has been very kindly sponsored by the city of Cape Town and we're very grateful for that because it's an incentive. So I guess what you're seeing here today is the, the very words of our slogan, together for Happy Pets. Since Afripo arrived here in Capricorn, there is a big, big, big change. You can't see any dog um, running around with empty stomach. There is a huge, huge, huge change. And the community is so happy to have this uh, pet clinic. The dogs over here are being sterilized, deeply dewormed, and vaccinated. Good to know that they are in the best hands possible to go home for that extra love. <laughs> Lisa, it's so good meeting you and seeing the incredible work that you're doing. And I've got to say, it looks like a lot of the pets here are in need of some parasite treatment, right? And it honestly warms my heart to know that Boringer Ingelheim are not only the sponsor, but you guys are actually on the ground too. So what actually started this relationship and partnership with AfriPaw? We, as a company, we believe in the human-animal bond and that humans can benefit from their animals and vice versa. So if you have a healthy animal, your humans tend to be healthier too. And what we really like about an uh, organization like AfriPaw is that they work in the community. They don't remove the pets. They do ongoing education about parasite control, responsible pet ownership, to look after their pets and to give them the best lives that they can have. It's an integrated effort, so as you can see today, a lot of our volunteers are actually Freigrund community members, and I think everyone feels proud of the effort. They're happy to see that it's making a difference. Bobby is a part of our family. I got Bobby 2009 when he was a puppy, yes. And I can tell you, Bobby, she raised my children. I was working in Central City, so sometimes I finish like 12 midnight. The gate is locked, the door is open, the TV is on, the children are sleeping. Bobby sits on a couch watching, watching them. Really is how Bobby is so important to me and my children. 
resource communities like Freigrund face huge barriers to pet care. So we aim to remove all these barriers. So you might not have the funds to, to treat your pet, you might not have the transportation, but you do have the will and the power to decide that you're going to sterilize your pet and you do have the ability to walk to the field and that's why we're so grateful to Capricorn Primary School for making their field available to us free of charge. For us it's about education and building relationships with people and making pet care possible. A dog is very very important. If you have a dog you feel like you have a baby because the dog is your friend. If you need a friend, is your friend, is your best friend. If you have a dog, you have a best, best, best friend in your life. It's the same as a child. Because you can't just say, I want to have a child, but you're not going to look after that, that child. It's part of your life, you must look after it. Well, parasite control is very much about preventative medicine. And we see in the community, we see quite a, a large uptake when people see the difference in their pets once they've been treated for ticks and fleas. They look better, they eat better, they're just happier pets. And it's very important because we know that some of the internal parasites as well as external parasites can be transmitted from the owners to the pets, to the, from the pets to the owners. All right, so let's see if we can help out and lend a hand here. Give them one of these awesome next guard spectra. Here we go, here's a nice big one for you. Oh, you're such a good boy, yes. <laughs> Looks like we just got another healthy pet. Tick. <laughs> big thing is that it brings hope and hope hope is a powerful thing we're seeing a lot more animals that are being sterilized we're seeing a lot more pets that are being cared for um, less pets that are mangy that are thin scavenging the streets because there's hope and there's a doable solution I just think it's very important for prominent brands to be part of the community and to give back and assist the people who don't always have the ability to get top class veterinary care. Now it's days like this that truly remind me of the power of community. When people stand together, change truly is possible. Now isn't it incredible to see how everybody here has an aligned goal to make sure that these animals truly are happy. Now is that not heartwarming enough? <laughs> Oh man, Ryle in his element. This is why Ryle and I have like nine rescue animals at home. Absolutely beautiful. Love what Afripaws are doing. And I think the best part is because of how far they have to go to entrench themselves to look after these dogs, they get to know the communities and they're actually changing perceptions. We can see on the street how people's attitudes towards these amazing animals have changed. So well done, Afripaws.
Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show here on S3. Something that we've spoken quite often about mm. on the show recently, and it's been on everyone's tongue, is sustainability. Sustainability uh. plays such an important role in preserving life on Earth for future generations and just for everyone still to come. Oh, completely. And Espresso have become synonymous with creating coffee experiences that are at their very core sustainable to the last drop. And it all starts with the coffee berries themselves on those trees. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's mm. good. Con estos árboles podremos empezar de nuevo. Hace años atrás podemos hacer recuentos de, de las temperaturas. Si hablamos de cinco años atrás, los climas eran más favorables. Problemas ambientales mayores, pues digamos que serían los, los deslizamientos de, de, de tierra, cual por las lluvias, por las, a veces la gente tala, pues digamos, los bosques donde no es falto de, de orientar la gente. Empezamos a, a combatir este problema es con empezando a reforestar, recibiendo estos proyectos que nos benefician a, a nosotros en, en nuestra comunidad, a, en nuestra nación y también ayudamos en todo el mundo. La importancia que tienen los árboles porque hay una seguridad de terreno, en primer lugar. En segundo lugar, que esos árboles nos ayudan a nosotros a no perjudicar los, los, las aguas. Los árboles también, además de que sostienen el terreno, nos dan abono orgánico. Es necesario eh, el sombrío para, para establecer los cultivos por el fenómeno climático. Si es un terreno bastante cálido, digamos, o caliente, eh, de alta temperatura, eh, es necesario mucho el, el, el árbol al que cura el, el, el árbol de café. Podemos mejorar la calidad de vida porque con los árboles frutales tenemos la, la bendición de poder eh, comercializarlo. A largo plazo eh, podríamos tener un, un beneficio también económico porque son árboles de madera, caoba, palo blanco. En el caso mío ya no lo voy a lograr, pero tengo mis nietos, tengo mis bisnietos y estos van a aprovechar esto. Absolutely amazing. What I love about Nespresso is they really do understand that this is an ecosystem. It's got to be held in balance. And get this, since 2014, Nespresso has invested more than 165 million rand and planted in the process more than 2.83 million trees in Colombia and Ethiopia, Guatemala. Um, they are kind of hotbeds of where they draw their coffee from, uh, all part of um, this program to help rebuild the forests around the farms that are growing. No, for sure. And when it, come, when it comes to sustainability, they're definitely putting their money Absolutely. where their mouths are. And we are putting our monies mm. and our mouths where the coffee is. Our mouths where the money is. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With every cup, we cultivate some of the finest coffee in the world, celebrating farmers as artists, elevating every coffee moment, because with every cup, precious coffee preserves the beauty of our world. Nespresso, what else? I love the coffee, I really do. It's beautiful, sustainable, delicious, but you need a perfect accompaniment to your coffee, and that's why we've got a beautiful recipe for you. I wanna make some muffins, and this is all with Be Well. We're talking about muffins that have a touch of pineapple in them, they've got a touch of turmeric in them, a little bit of carrot, and these are so simple to make. You're gonna to wanna to throw it into the kids' lunch box, you're gonna to wanna to freeze them, you're gonna to wanna to take them out for a quick snack, but it's gonna be beautiful and healthy for you. So I'm gonna need some assistance, and that's why I'm looking for, for Jamie, if you don't mind coming through here. I need you to help, man, that's the thing. Oh. 
Oh, listen, yes. I just needed to put it on an apron and get ready That's because it. you are busy cooking up a storm. I was going to do it alone. Where are you going to do it? And allow you to watch me do it, but it's fine. I want you to just uh, kind of get your hands dirty. No, so no, to speak. no, I'm are doing you ready? absolutely nothing. I'm just going to stand here and watch you. Uh, Oh, you want to watch me do this whole thing? Okay, that's fine. All right, so this is how we're going to start off with our wet ingredients over there. You're going to handle the dry ingredients if you want to. Otherwise, you can watch me do that as well, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to start off Help. wet ingredients. Bob and I working together. So, yes, we have to, all connected. Also, when you say put your coffee with your money, it's your mouth and your money. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard that. You knew what I mean. <laughs> but, but you guys knew what I mean. You knew it's what fine. I mean. It's, it's, it's okay. so early in the morning. The English hasn't come out fully yet. It doesn't, eh? It really doesn't. Okay, so I've got some B-Well uh, mayo over here. Now, this one, it's, it's really good. It's thick and creamy, number one. And Another great thing about it is that it's uh, basically endorsed by the Heart and Stroke Foundation. You've got low in saturated fat, omega 3s in here as well, cholesterol free, naturally, mm. GMO free. Mm. You know what it's not free of? What? Deliciousness. Yeah, Just get it right, eh? Okay. Also, I got it. I got so I'm going to do three tablespoons of these. Three tablespoons, you know, if you want to change it up, okay, you can actually use eggs at this part of the recipe. And you can actually do three eggs over here because your tablespoon and your mayonnaise basically, it's, it's an egg. And then from that particular point, I've got some more B-Well ingredients for you. And this is my little bit of, of oil that I have over here. Also, as I said, low in saturated fat, omega-3s. I'm going to do a little cup and a half of this just to make sure that we have the balance going. And, and we get that saltiness through. I imagine that this will give it a nice moist texture, oh, you know, yeah. inside the muffin. Yes, you know. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And these things are so versatile. I mean, you can freeze it and you can actually just, I mean, it, also with, with kids running around, you must make sure that you have a plan for everything. It has to be quick. So pineapple, grated, mm. that goes in over there. Yeah. Then carrot, grated, that goes in over there. Vitamin C, they vanilla need essence, that. you know, the essence of vanilla. Shabana. You actually have to do a little vanilla and song. And why sing it? Yes. You have to go, Shabana. That's uh -huh. it. And then one thing that, this actually reminds me of you. Why? It's honey. It's quite Aww. sweet. So, uh, You're my honey buddy. There we go. And that all gets incorporated over there. Now, while I do all of that and the honey does its thing, I'm going to look at you and say dry ingredients. What okay. do you have in front of you? You've got some uh, flour. That's yes. a good place to start. In front of there, you're going to pick up the turmeric. Turmeric goes in. I'm going to do it like you as well. Baking powder. Yes, you have to do a skillful type of thing. That's it. I'll be doing that. Got salt, salt is coming in there. That is a... My salt is... That, that's it. You know how to work it. Yeah? There we go. Perfect. Salt going in. And then a little, a little bit of pepper. That's salt's, salt's friend. Always mm -hmm. goes. A little bit of white pepper. Okay, that's just a little bit, you know what it does? It elevates the aromatics on the nose as well. It gives you that uh, sort of body when it comes to the spice we're trying to incorporate. And again, I'm also just loving the flavor balance here. We have some carrots and pineapple and Indeed. the salt will also just cut all of that acidity. Yes, so that's basically, so I'm gonna some whisk this seeds. wet ingredients up. That's it, chia seeds are going Ooh, in. Ooh, where's Zoe we'll, now for the I know, right? And then what also, another thing that you have that you, that's the pumpkin spice. So you've got oh, a nutmeg that, in there, you've got some cinnamon. I was just gonna cinnamon. ask now what, what that spice was, that's but some it. pumpkin spice. And then this is some sugar. That's it. And then what you need to do for me as well, those are dates. And I haven't had you know what? I know you haven't been on one of these um, <clears throat> for the longest time. However, I just thought I'd think about oh, you and I'd offer you not only okay. one date, I've cut up about four so, to five dates in there. And I'm going to throw this in as well. That's right. Just as you throw it in, the pickup line, it goes in there as well because it's a date, isn't it? So, the <laughs> so you, <laughs> you have to. You're silly. You're yeah, so silly. Yeah, that's it. It'll be like, you know, some, some cheesy date pickup line. It'll probably be like, yeah, I added dates because you are my jewel. That's how it goes. Oh, it's a, that, it's is... a type of date, a jewel date. It doesn't matter. Oh. It's fine. Yeah, you, know? you see, sometimes you must get entry-level jokes. Hold on, but I... It goes I, way over I, my No, head. it's fine. It's okay. Honestly, you drive me nuts. That's why I added walnuts. Ah, that, yeah, is that, that, that working? That works. Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking see, about. My niece is going a bit like and, this. And this is what we need in the kitchen. You know, you need this type of romance in the kitchen. So if you're going to cook with your significant other, um, and even, you know what, with the kids coming, coming through, this is such a simple recipe. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients, make sure all those dates are coated so they don't drop to the bottom. And once we're good with that, tell me when you're ready. And I'm, I'm dropping this if in. If you ask me, I'm ready. That's it. So I'm going to pop that. You're going to pop this in here? Yes, wet ingredients into dry ingredients. Are you ready to rumble? I'm ready. Okay, let's and do this. Three, two, one. one. Drop them in. And you're going to cooperate for me nice and slowly. I want you to give it a good fold. That's it. Mm. I like your folding game. Look at you go. Oh. Hey? I, don't know if you th I don't know if you're throwing shade with my... No, no. Okay. Your folding game is amazing. Ooh. Okay? This is there great. Look at that color. I love the color of this as well. 
And you see that beautiful zesty colors coming through. And I love this, I really do. I think this is just a this is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful type of recipe. It's quick and easy to make. You're gonna make a dough with that from there. You're gonna pop it into our little cupcake. You know, little cupcake Stunning holders over there. Holders. Remember, if you're gonna add that, just make sure it's three quarters because you don't wanna go right to the top, otherwise you're gonna get those strange overlapping cupcakes. Keep yes, on working yes. the arm, man. Yesterday okay? was arm day, That's so it. now this is That's working it. my arms. That's it, but so... To be fair, I know, I understand now why you let me do this side. You let me do that. That's just that's all part of the work the and the exercise and the cardio in the that's kitchen. Fine. So if you do want to get the recipe to make these incredible muffins with Be Well, then all you have to do is go to expressoshow.com, pop them in the oven, they come out, you can use them on the spot. If you do freeze them, make sure they defrost just a little bit. And once you've done that, I want to make sure that you eat them with a little bit of warmth. So you can pop them in the microwave mm. and then get your cuppa ready and put your money where your coffee where your mouth is, as Jamie and Graham said a little bit earlier. They're super simple. Give them a try. And who knows, you could be impressing some family members or making sure there's a good surprise in the lunchbox for all those kids. Give it a shot. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back as we delve into, as promised, some inspirational tech. Speak Geek? It's not just a question, but it's actually a South African company, an innovative company at that, that's providing virtual reality and augmented reality solutions to businesses. And in so doing, changing the way we teach and do things. Now connecting with us from Joburg to tell us more about the business and how they are using VR and AR to change education into a more realistic experience is Dennis Varden. Dennis, very good morning. How are you? How you, Graham? All good this side, just cold. Yeah, man. Deal with it, buddy. Deal with it, man. We've layered up on our side, and we've <laughs> got to do it. But this is going to warm us up because this is innovative. It's really interesting, and it's kind of a buzzword at the moment. But I love it when we see tech mature into this space where it becomes more relevant and being used in business in a very creative way. So maybe let's start with a bit of a sales pitch here. Why is VR and AR such a good choice or solution when it comes to training workers? Sure, Graham. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's quite a few benefits. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is drastic improvement in the retention of the knowledge for the trainee. So Pricewaterhouse did a, a survey recently um, where they showed that people learn four times faster than a classroom, literally 275% more confident with the skills that they have to apply after learning. Uh, the guys are more emotionally connected to the content um, and they're four times more focused than e-learning. Obviously, wow. you're in, in an immersed experience, so you have no distractions. Uh, so you, you can't be looking at your phone while you're inside the, the, the experience, <laughs> uh, which obviously improves the retention. 
Um, I think there's other things like consequences. So we can train consequences. Imagine you're driving in a car uh, and we're teaching you advanced driving. But uh, in principle, if you have an accident, we couldn't do that in real life, but we can simulate it in virtual reality. We can do the same if you're sort of drilling underground and you hit a pipe and something blows up. We can actually do that. Uh, obviously, in real life, you can't. Um, then obviously things like we can track movements inside there. So you can see Sean on the screen going at the top there. So we can actually track how quickly he does things. Uh, we can track his eyes. We can actually track heart rate. Um, and, and what we do is we use all that data to make the, the training more effective. Um, and we can actually customize it per user. Um, one thing we've got, which is probably proprietary, we, uh, we, we're probably the only guys in Africa that have this now as a networked experience. So what happens is you can all join, people can join in from different geographical locations, either in a headset or a PC, um, and we can be in the same virtual space. So I can be training you and I'm sitting in China and you're sitting in Johannesburg, um, and you're in a VR headset and I'm on a PC and we're in the same virtual space literally uh, doing the same thing, and I can be showing you how to do it. So, yeah, I think those are just some of the benefits, actually. Um, yeah, and also how it kind of um, compares to traditional education. I love this. It's, and, and there are you know, thousands of gamers watching this right now going, but we've been having it, man. We've been having it. Um, and it's so amazing to see it, it come to life in this space where it really does become kind of outcomes-based from the get-go. It's not about giving information, then testing that information and bringing it back. You're kind of engaging from the, that first moment that the headset gets put on. So maybe you can expand on the areas where this training really has been proven to be effective when it comes to VR and AR. What are you guys using it for? So uh, we've done work with the with Forestry SFA where we actually train people people in um, how to use a chainsaw in virtual reality. So we actually have a, a real chainsaw, obviously with no chain, um, <laughs> and the, the trainee is, is connected uh, in a VR headset, and we literally teach them how to operate the piece of equipment. Now, you can obviously do that danger-free, you know, as opposed to a person having to cut his hand off. We'll never, <laughs> ever replace practical use. Uh, but I think what we can do is we can really bridge the gap of the theoretical training um, and the ability to be able to do some practical, in inverted commas, um, before you actually real, do the real life experience on the piece of equipment. So what you're seeing now is actually a drill rig, uh, which we've built, where the operator literally operates a drilling machine underground um, and we teach them how to operate the piece of equipment. So obviously this is used in mining. Um, so those are just some of the examples of the work that, we, that we've done personally. But in terms of VR, uh, you know, how does it improve on traditional sort of forms of, of education and training? I mean, you can, you can train remotely, so from different geographical areas. Obviously the danger thing is quite a big thing. Yeah. We don't have to take a guy underground to teach him this piece of equipment. We can actually get him to do it. We can also link it to a PC where they can play it as a game. I mean, you were saying gamers uh, <laughs> have known this forever. But the truth of the situation is gamification works really well in terms of learning. It makes things fun. Uh, you learn it better. Your retention is better. And you can do it over and over and over and over again. So, you know, that same thing that you have in VR can be experienced on a laptop or on a mobile phone just in a different way with the same model. And it's measurable. I love that, that it's a two-way flow of data and information. That's amazing. And we have the saying in our industry, there is no substitute for experience. And actually being able to go through that process, physically experience these things, gold. I'm going to say one word, my friend. Invest. Invest in this company and to do it now. This technology is about to take flight. Dennis, what an absolute pleasure. You've inspired us. You've got us excited this morning. All the best for this, this, uh, the remainder of this year where I would imagine your kind of remote training is going to be even more uh, crucial than ever before. Thank you so much for opening a window, my friend. Graham, thanks for having us on. incredible to see where we are going the future is literally here and once you put that headset on it's all around us amazing
So we should continue this conversation around tech. I think it's so fascinating. And how it can improve our lives and the RIA C9 sign language interpreter wearable glasses, believe it or not, technology is a solution designed to bridge the communication gap between hearing and non-hearing people in social environments and workspaces. Here's how it works. You simply search for the words you want to sign and start a conversation. Here's the full story. My name is Juan Danjovu. I'm the founder of RIA. RIA is a company that focuses on bridging the communication barrier between hearing and non-hearing people. So RIA is a wearable glasses technology solution for sign language interpreters to provide interpretation services anywhere, anytime. The RIA C9 wearable glasses technology for sign language interpreter was designed such that it allows the hearing person to press a button and connect to the sign language interpreter and thereafter the communication between a hearing person like myself can start the conversation with a deaf person. I work as a software developer here at RIA. The most challenging part was to actually find a way that will match our RIA C9 classes as well as the RIA C9 app that uh, they will actually have a way of communicating. Therefore, we had to do more research as to how we'll find a better way to match the two, uh, the app and the device. It took us over 16 months to develop RIA C9, which included also research and developing. So this is RIA C9 Sign Language Interpreter Wearable Classes solution. Now I will show you how to assemble it, four components. I will show you now. The first one is the frame, the battery. But here we have a camera, a screen inside, a microphone and a speaker for the hearing person to able to hear what the sign language interpreter is saying and the connector that power the wearable glasses. The next step now is just for you to connect to the internet and then wear the wearable glasses technology. Press a button that will easily connect to a sign language interpreter. You're ready to start a conversation with a deaf colleague whether it's at the bank or at the police station or at your workplace. The RIA C9 is very easy to use because it's like your mobile phone. It's like, it's, it's as easy as making a video call. Because I've been a sign language interpreter for over 15 years. The RIA C9 allows you, as a sign language interpreter, to be able to connect wherever you are. So you don't need to physically be there. So it means that it minuses the time as a sign language interpreter and the expenses of you from moving from one uh, venue to the other. So with RIA C9, you can do three clients on the same day at the same place without having to have all these extra expenses, which is the reason that RIA C9 was, was developed so that it can make the sign language interpreters more accessible. The RIA C9 has been very helpful, not to me only, but also to the deaf community. And it simplifies things. You don't need to meet a person face to face. So it means each and everywhere you go, you will always have an interpreter at hand via the video. So it simplifies things. Interpreters, don't, they no longer need to travel because technology is making the communication much simpler. And it's better now because we can receive the services. I'm feeling positive because so far we needed something like this for so long and then there has deaf people have been struggling they have to ask their friends there is barrier to communication with the development of Ria C9 everything is positive because what we need is accessibility and then we have it so the goal for the company is to see Ria C9 wearable glasses technology grow outside of South Africa and being used within the SADC region, not only the SADC region, also grow across Africa and worldwide. Mind blown. That it is was... so cool. Wow. Of course, the rear C9 really does move mountains. It does a world of good in making deaf persons feel accepted and also integrated in sectors of society that they would normally struggle in. And now this product that actually provides endless possibilities for both hearing and non-hearing persons around the world. It's interesting stuff and thanks for watching. Thank you.
Yes, sir, my space crush is back. We are heading out into space again in the final frontier. And we are joined by our science engagement astronomer from the observatory, Dr. Dan Kanema, who is going to be telling us about the oldest spiral galaxy known to man called BRI 1335-0417. Just rolls off the tongue. And it was formed, get this, 12.4 billion years ago. Dr. Dan, great to have you back, my friend. How are you doing? Good morning, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Yourself? Uh, very cool, man. I'm always excited when I see you, excited like a child, because uh, you just bring us the coolest space news and the coolest stories to tell. It really does open our eyes. So let's start at the very beginning with this one. I mean, not, you know, 13.4 billion years ago or 12.4 billion years ago, but um, with the spiral galaxy itself. In the simplest terms, what is a spiral galaxy? I'm guessing it's turning? Yeah. It, it's, it's rotating, and, and that is kind of one of the key points. So a spiral galaxy, it's very similar to our Milky Way. It's a flat disk, um, which is spinning, and it sort of forms these spiral arms. Uh, but the interesting part about spiral galaxies is they, they're quite a mature form of galaxy. Initially, when a galaxy forms, it's kind of spherical and clumpy, but only after some time um, can it evolve into uh, a spiral. Uh, so that, that and that's something which is obviously uh, critical to, to this discovery. And obviously, when you can take a photo of it from very, very far away, and you get to see the full picture, it, a picture it looks spectacular. I mean, what a name! Really romantic. BRI one three three five dash zero four one seven. But it was discovered by the Alma. Am I saying that right? Alma Telescope yeah. in Chile. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, that, so the ELMA telescope is the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. So we've spoken about Meerkat before, mm. uh, and that's an array of these various dishes. Um, ELMA is a similar array, but it looks in the millimeter rather than the, the radio. Uh, and yeah, th there's a picture of it. It's, it's uh, an array of these telescopes uh, which are detecting millimeter radiation. Wow, I love it. Impressive. Be absolutely beautiful visuals associated to this. But what does it mean from a scientific perspective? Why is this so exciting? I'm guessing the age of it and the fact that this takes us so far back in time is, is pretty cool in itself. Yeah, so the, the universe is 13.8 uh, billion years old. Uh, wow. And the, if this galaxy is a spiral galaxy at 12.4 billion years. That means it only had 1.4 billion years to evolve into a spiral galaxy. And that's tricky. So, so that's kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot of time. It sounds like a lot of time, but if you want to turn it yourself into, into a spiral galaxy, you need, you need a bit of time. So, so that's kind of where it challenges the, the understanding of how galaxies are forming uh, at the moment is, is how something so mature could have formed so quickly. Uh, so it's an OG, man. It really is an OG. Now, apparently, an even older galaxy was observed in 2020 called GNZ or Z11, and that was formed 13.4 billion years ago and is 134 uh, non million kilometers away from us, which is 134 <laughs> followed by 30 zeros. Tell us a bit more about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why we go with light years, because uh, <laughs> kind of keep, keep the numbers down a bit. Uh, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the, the record for the oldest galaxy, but, but the difference there is that's not a spiral galaxy. Uh, so we, we know that some of the early galaxies were forming uh, as few as, um, you know, 400 million years after the Big Bang, uh, and, and this is an example of one of those, but, but it's obviously a, a sort of clumpy, less mature galaxy. Man, give it time, man. Just give it a little bit of time. Um, absolutely amazing stuff. It's amazing how far we can reach back into our past now. Thanks to science. Thanks to what we are doing on this planet. As always, you've blown our minds. Dr. Daniel Kanema, um, we always love having you join us. Thank you so much for opening a window into the final frontier. Thanks again for having me, man. Oh, Mind-blowing to see where we have come from. I love the fact that we are able to observe this slice of history. Um, and yes, I know it, 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 it kind of messes with our perception of space and time, but it is beautiful to me that as a human species, we are able to track the origins of our very galaxy in this way. Really, really mind-blowing stuff.
Thank you, G. The time now is just after seven time to have a second look at this news headline. Starting with your national news, a 39-year-old man has been arrested after being found with compressed pure cocaine valued at some 400 million rand. Now, police arrested the man on the N1 North near the R21 flying saucer interchange. Police spokesperson Colonel Katlejo Mojale said a bucky that was towing a 12-foot ski boat was stopped after a tip-off. Mojale said officers found 800 kilograms of compressed pure cocaine. Investigations are continuing and more arrests are imminent. Hawks commanding officer Lieutenant General Godfrey Lebea praised the police for their work. Now, staying with your local news as well, South Africa has reported the highest number of new coronavirus infections in more than four months, indicating that the country is officially entering the third wave. In the past 24 hours, 5,782 cases have been reported and 110 people have passed away. Meanwhile, the head of the Special Investigation Unit, Andy Mothibi, says more than 100 cases related to corruption in the acquisition of COVID-19 protective equipment have been referred to the National Prosecuting Authority for possible prosecution. The unit is investigating allegations of corruption of some 14.3 billion rand. Now moving further abroad, a chemical-laden cargo ship is sinking off the coast of Sri Lanka, sparking fears of a huge environmental disaster. The Singapore-registered Express Pearl had been on fire for almost two weeks before the blaze was put out this week. Now hundreds of tons of oil could leak into the sea if this happens, devastating nearby marine life and some of the country's most pristine beaches. The Sri Lankan and Indian navies had worked jointly over the past days in an attempt to avert a horrific horrendous disaster. And then staying with your international news as well, the International Criminal Court, ICC, has requested that Sudan uh, hand over one of the key people accused of war crimes and genocide in Darfur and also an ally of ousted President Omar Hassan al-Bashir. Now, the accused Ahmed Haroun requested to be sent to The Hague, where the court is based, complaining that he would not receive a fair trial in Sudan. Bashir had for years resisted warrants issued against himself and four of his allies, including Haroun, over the conflict conflict in Sudan's western region in which an estimated 300,000 people perished. And then the underwater enchanted kelp forest in the ocean just off Simonstown ranks among the seven new wonders of the world chosen by Bloomberg Media Distribution, a leading provider of news, pictures, videos and data to the media in more than 130 countries. Now the forest profile was raised after it had featured in the Academy Award winning documentary My Octopus Teacher, the heartwarming story of how filmmaker Craig Foster finds solace there and befriends an octopus where the two form a very unique unique bond. Now Foster says the forest is filled with incredible animals, many unknown to science, some are tiny, some quite enormous, a vast aquatic uh, ecosystem stretching from Cape Agalis to central Namibia and a shallow underwater jungle more than twice as wide as the Grand Canyon and rated among the most productive ecosystems on earth. Bloomberg's other new wonders of the world are Siguria, an ancient rock fortress in Sri Lanka, San Agustin, a large archaeological area in Colombia, the Nahani National Park in Canada and the Baal Bek Temple Complex in Lebanon, the Antiquera Dolmen site in Andalusia, Spain and the top end rock art of Ubir in Australia's Kakadu National Park. On that note, that is where I leave your news headlines. Here's G one more time with a look at the sports. Fear gets overwhelmed. Fearless overcomes. With all women dread disease cover from First for Women. Thanks so much, Jamie. Goals are plenty to kick us off. Kaiser Chiefs kept their hopes of finishing in the Premier Soccer League top eight alive after a hard-fought 3-2 victory over Golden Arrows at the FNB Stadium last night. Michael Gumere, he opened the scoring in the 21st minute to give the visitors the lead. Then Lebohang Manyami was on fire last night, netted the equaliser nine minutes later to make it one apiece. And after challenging for the ball in the second half, Amakosi defender Eric Matoho, he scored an own goal to give Arrows the lead once again. But then Manyama stepped up scoring his second and third goal to seal the win for the Soweto Giants who now move up to 10th in the standings. On to tennis, Serena Williams continued her bid for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. That was after easing into the third round of the French Open yesterday. The 39-year-old American beat Romania's Mihaela Buzarnescu, ranked 174th in the world at the moment. 6-3, 5-7, 6-1 last night. So the former champion and seventh seed for this tournament, Williams, will now meet fellow American 
American Danielle Collins in the third round tomorrow. And then finally on to cricket as roughly 6,500 fans returned to the home of cricket in London. It was New Zealand debutant Devon Conway who stole the show with a brilliant unbeaten 136 on day one of the first test against England at Lords. The uh, South African born Conway in fact uh, became just the sixth batsman in history to score 100 on test debut at Lords. The 29 year old anchored the visitors to 246 for three on the first day. Brilliant start. Day two of that action between England and the Black Caps will continue at Lords Cricket Ground from 12 p.m. South African time today. And that's where we leave our sport for this hour. Let's get another look at the weather. Thanks a lot, G. Let's take a look at that weather. And thank you to all of our viewers to take the time to share their sunrise views with us. Thank you to Mandy Tainsma from Cape Town, who shared this beautiful photo of the Cape Town sky, showing off hues of blue, pink, and yellow as it does today. The mother city will reach a maximum of 90 degrees Celsius. Next, we head up the coast to Monique Jerling from Kaibecha, who posted gorgeous images of the sun rising over the ocean. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you for this. Kaibecha, you can expect a maximum of 18 degrees Celsius. We are definitely so fortunate to experience such breathtaking sunrises here in South Africa and we just love seeing the way you capture these photos so please continue to share them on the Expresso Facebook page. We'd love to see them and of course love to see you during this weather report. Now while we love seeing the various parts of South Africa we also love exploring and learning about the different cultures and countries internationally. So this morning if we have any viewers tuned in from Mexico then this update is for you. Your 7 a.m. update is from the coastal resort city of Puerto Vallarta located in the Mexican state of Jalisco. Uh, nearly 50% of the workforce is employed in tourist-related industries, hotels, restaurants, personal services, and transportation. The municipality does, however, continue to have a strong agriculture, industrial, and commercial sectors. Uh, Puerto Vallarta experiences a tropical wet and dry climate with average daily highs sitting at around 30 degrees Celsius and average lows at about 21 degrees Celsius. Today, if you are in Puerto Vallarta, you can expect a warm day with a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. However, you should prepare for a a couple of thunder showers in the late morning. Now moving on to some news. Next, an item of major weather news. The UN's World Meteorological Organization yesterday said the weather phenomenon La Nina has ended its latest cycle, forecasting that warmer temperatures would follow in the northern hemisphere. La Nina refers to the large-scale cooling of surface temperatures in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. Occurring every two to seven years, the effect has widespread impacts on weather around the world and enhances the probabilities for summer rains globally, including Southern Africa, particularly Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, and South Africa. La Nina conditions have been in place since August of last year and peaked in October to November as a moderate strength event. The meteorological organization said that neutral conditions, meaning either El Nino or La Nina being in effect, are likely to dominate the tropical Pacific in the next few months. Despite La Nina's temporary global cooling effects, it was not enough to prevent 2020 from being one of the three warmest years on record. Now let's take a look at the temperatures on record for the rest of the country and starting off with you as always, Polokwane, 5 to 18 for you, Pombela, 12 to 19, Pretoria you can expect 5 this morning, rising to 18, Johannesburg your max is just 15 from a low of 3, Maya King, 3 to 21, Klerksdorp, good morning to you, 1 and you rise up to 17, believe it or not, Kimberley you're minus 1 and you rise to 18 degrees Celsius, Bloemfontein 1 to 20, Richards Bay 8 to 20, Peter Maritzburg 7 to 12 with a 60% chance of rain. Durban, the chances even higher in your area of precipitation, 80%, 13 to 18. Umtata, 9 to 11. East London, 14 to 17. Craddock, you can expect 6 this morning, rising to just 13. Khabecha, 8 to 18. George, 8 to 17. Cape Town, 9 to 19. Uh, Worcester, 21 the max from a low of 5. Sutherland, 0 to 15, and then Uppington 2 to 22 as your max today. No matter where you are, I hope you're enjoying the weather forecast, of course, and uh, the temperatures that you can expect today. If you have any sunrise photos, send them my way. I'd love to add you to this segment. How can you deny that smile, uh, that smile just, man? Come all on. all the love. Speaking about love, we're all about self-love this morning on our social media. Mm -hmm. And we asked you, what is one thing that you love about yourself, that you value about yourself? Share it with us. What do you love about yourself? 
Ah, oh, no, we were, it's you're so gonna, difficult about to, to ask me. I know. Yeah, I know. I was going to ask you. Thing to answer, it's difficult yeah. to answer because you know when you say something bad about yourself, it's easy to list those things. Mm -hmm. um, I will say my smile though, mm -hmm. just like uh, yeah, it gets me into trouble, gets smile. me out of trouble. Yeah, so, no, yeah. you got a beautiful yeah. smile. What about you? Good. I'm going to ask you. Um, it's definitely not a physical feature. I, I think my positivity, probably, mm -hmm. like it's something that's genuinely a part of who I am, and it's something that that uh, you know I, I don't have to really work on to to kind of spread. So I love that. I love the fact that that I generally have like a positive vibe. No, uh, for sure. That, that kind of energy, which is something cool. Let's see what you guys, the most important people in this conversation, had to say. Tavo Tsepa saying, ability to think outside the box. My friends call me Mr. DIY. That's a cool thing to, cool. to have, yeah. Re Linnea says, how humble I am. Well, <laughs> are you though? Are you though? Yeah, are you though? No, Someone I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, and it's vitally important. Tapelo saying, I'm grateful that I'm alive and healthy and I love being alive. I, that's the best we comment of the day. We love that you love being alive as well. <laughs> it's a really good quality to have, <laughs> let's be honest. Estelle says, my heart, my soul and my mind. Wow. Yes, girl, going deep there with that I one. I love that, but to, and this is not a, 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 it feels awkward, but do it. Go through the process. Mm. Uh, it's so important that you identify within your those things that make you feel proud and make you feel happy so that you can kind of propagate that foster that why do you love yourself let us know on the Express the morning show facebook page and we love that you're alive <laughs>
Uh, is there art questions? law? <laughs> yeah, is there yes. anything a bit more? You've um, been all lawyery there for a second. <laughs> um, is there law that's specific to art? Okay, cool. So art law, so there isn't a specific segment of law in that you call art law, yeah. but it kind of merges a few different areas of law. So there'll be intellectual property aspects that we were talking about earlier, like mm. copyright. There'll definitely be a contract aspect, lots of agreements going on within the art industry. Um, there might be some labor aspects. So it's, it's going to cover a whole lot of different areas of law. But there are lawyers, like us at Legalese, who kind of specialize on this area and like make it their focus. And you know, in that, you're kind of looking at a whole lot of different things. Because there's money there, man. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of money. I'm, I've made so many <laughs> stickman pictures that I could have sold, but I'm not represented and not sign up with the gallery. Nobody wants to accept it. Non-fungible, my friend. I have no idea. I'm going to go in it soon. Saying. But what are the benefits of actually getting represented by a team like yours? and more importantly, maybe sign up with a gallery so you can start selling. Okay, cool. So, you know, so I guess with like within any creative industry, there's always two p bits of value. Yeah. There's the talent and creating the art. So, you know, maybe the reason you're not getting signed up is, I don't want to say anything about your stick men. It's better than most. <laughs> so there's the talent and then there's the business side okay. behind it. Often artists are very good at the talent, but don't want to focus or, uh, on, the, yeah. on the business side. So a gallery uh, art brings two things to the table. Firstly, they can help distribute your art, so actually get it to market, do the sales, and very often the art, the, the gallery or the manager or the brokers will help with the business side behind the artist's career. So it can be, I say can, not always yeah. is, mm -hmm. a very good merging, but of course artists should always be re weary of just handing over the reins of their career to someone else. Um, it's the same in music, it's totally, the same in, yeah. in all of the creative fields. You've got to have that, yes, you want to be focused on being creative, but you need to be able to protect your, yeah, your rights at the end. <laughs> being talented for a very small, very few lucky people in this world, having the talent is enough and, and everything kind of works out around you. But for you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of, uh, of creatives, you need to be able to manage your business as well as your creative pursuit. It might even be more important when you think perception is such a big part of the value of totally. art in the end. I need you to break something down for me. An art dealer and an art broker. Is sure. there a difference? What are those two? I mean, entities? so I'm not sure that there's such a difference. Classically, an art broker, uh, an art dealer would be used to describe a gallery, um, and an art broker would be someone who's got a specific interest in a specific type of art and brokers those deals. Not much of a difference, but for when you're looking at the art world in general, yep. there's going to be all there's going to be different kind of players. There'll be artists and managers, there'll be galleries, there'll be these brokers, and all of these things are people that are standing in the in the transaction that are going to take their kind of bit. Because so everyone gets a bit of commission. Everyone gets yeah. a bit of commission depending on what value they bring to it. And then the commission's going to differ depending on essentially how much value. So if, you've, if you're a gallery and you've taken a young artist from, for who's completely unknown to international fame, you're going to want to get a bigger chunk of that pie because you've, you've invested a lot more in it, as opposed to if you are a gallery that you know, has just signed on a very famous artist and they already have fame and you know, you're just kind of doing the sales for them, then it's going to be a smaller, smaller piece of the pie. It's good to know, though, because my stickman images, they've, they've been hot, it's tough to stop. I feel like you you're might going to get picked up from this. No, no, no. Like What's going to happen someone's is... Someone's watching. You're going to lose an ear. And then about 100 years after your passing, right? suddenly stickmen yeah. are going to be I'm the most valuable the commodity. Stickman. Is it, how do you do the, the mohawk and the it's stick? It's actually just one line just on one top line. of the head. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's line, line, line. That's a detail there. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need, just that's one need solid line. line. That's it. Really interesting stuff. <laughs> and um, I think vitally important that all creatives kind of think along these lines because you need to have the business backbone. It doesn't matter how creative, talented you are. Totally. At some point, you need to be able to manage that business. And you want to be successful not to just kind of um, get the acclaim for yeah. how good you are but you want to make some money off it we're going to continue this very interesting conversation with Thor in just a moment <laughs> So now what must happen is you must sit back, you must relax and enjoy this next performance because earlier on we got to know the story of indie rock outfit, Indie Dog, and now they're going to show us a rocking time with their single, You're Free, and you are free to enjoy this performance.
might be the coolest people ever. And I kind of feel like I have a bit of FOMO, myself, Carl, and Graham, because we don't have hair. Aitan Stern was rocking away. But please let us know what you thought of that performance. Of course, let us know, Express the Morning Show on S3. They still have more performances coming your way, but we'll see you after this. It's my feel good breakfast show.
I just want to say uh, 20th Century Fox called. They want the intro back eight times. Anyway, welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso on S3, and we're continuing our discussion with uh, the lawyer himself, the guru lawyer, legalese.co.za director, uh, Eitan Stern. And today we're chatting about all of the interesting aspects of the legal ins and outs of the art world. It's, mm. it's really interesting to me. The more we've spoken about this, the more questions that are, are, are coming to mind. I'm going to throw something in here sure. um, that's a little off brief, but I've just been thinking about this. What, so you're an artist. You paint this amazing painting yes. that then becomes really valuable, yeah. and yeah. you sell it to someone else, and they, keep, yes. they sell it on, sell it on, and eventually it's worth 57 million rand, doesn't yeah. it? artist to ever get any of that 57 million rand once he's sold that painting so so it's a fascinating thing so so in one way no they don't right like that once it's sold it's sold yeah and that is i mean that's what we talked about last week nfts yeah. that's the value in it because in built into the transaction you can make sure the artist always gets something but in another way the value of art Suddenly it, his what, paintings are worth 57 million. Exactly. So artists work very hard to maintain themselves in a specific price bracket. You don't want to underprice yourself and you don't want to put yourself, uh, your pricing outside of your, your, your own market. So if an artist is having something worth 57 million, they're going to have something else worth, you know, a lot of money. So, so it, it builds their career. So I wouldn't cry for any artist that's having something sold for 57 million. At the same time, no, they don't get any yeah. value. So maybe the matchstick men, <coughs> the key is you've been pricing. Yes yourself out of the game. Yeah, how, That's just a true. Have you been charging people? Uh, you know, it's an A4 piece of paper, okay. and I, I used blue pen blue that, I, that I found in my yeah. drawer, and I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going like 50,000 or okay. so. Okay, it's a lot. Okay. Is it a lot? It I mean, it's, too much. Is it a bit, I, okay. I mean, at least I know now. Maybe someone tonight, today, maybe you're gonna get a tweet <laughs> to say someone's interested. <laughs> but, uh, let's just, I mean, to, to your point now with regard to how it's resold and resold, sometimes you get a beautiful original artwork, mm. and then, it gets botched somehow, yes. somebody spoils it or ruins it, and now you have to look at this thing and then somebody does a restoration, which yes. is poor. At these, these moments, whose fault is that when it comes to the instances of poor restoration? And in those spots, I'm sure you want to get it done. You want to get it repaired. Sure. But you want to do it in such a way that it increases the value so it looks like a proper yeah. repair of an original. I want to know how that whole process works. So it's a fascinating question. Actually, I'm dealing with a matter like that literally at the moment. Okay. So, mm. so with restoration, with anything in law, whoever's at fault and does something wrong yeah. is the one that has to essentially pay for it. So okay. rest Restoration, you, they, restor restorers are dealing with damaged artwork, you know, so they're already dealing with something damaged. So generally, it's going to be hard to prove that the restorer was to blame for any further damage. But if you can show that the restorer maybe left the artwork out, so it got damaged, negligent, was yeah. negligent, did something, it's hard to prove, but if you could prove they did something which, which damaged the art, then they would, would be to blame. And if you can't, then, then you're going to have to repair it. Okay. But that is why whenever you, or most transactions, but certainly if you are leaving something valuable with someone else, if you're taking art to the store to get repaired, even if you're taking your computer to a, a repair shop, it's very important that you sign, that you look at their terms and conditions, and that's going to say what they're going to be liable for, and that you sign it, and that you understand what you're in for and what you're not. And if you, and if you are just giving something of value over to someone else, you've got to make sure either you're insured or they're insured, or or you've got to think about what's going to happen if this thing gets damaged further. The great way to look after the art, obviously give it to the professionals, those that okay. look after it the best, like a gallery or like the, the Louvre, for instance, that houses yes. probably the most valuable art collection in the world, I would yeah. imagine, including the Mona Lisa. Uh, how does that agreement work? Who's liable for what? So the Mona Lisa is an interesting one. The Mona Lisa is actually owned by the state of France. It oh. was uh, bought by King so-and-so. Let them eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they can eat a lot of cake with that painting. Sure. I think, I mean, it's essentially, it's a priceless painting. Um, but it's owned by the state of France, and they house it in the Louvre. Um, so a lot of art, some art will get housed in private collections where only the owners can see it, and other people will want their art to be on display for the public to see it. So whoever owns the art can essentially decide where it's displayed. So a lot of famous paintings have been loaned or, or, uh, or uh, just put on display in the Louvre. So it's, you know, so something like a Da Vinci cannot, is not just enjoyed by one person, but by many. But there certainly would be Da Vinci's out there that sit in people's private collections. Do you know anything about the second Mona Lisa? <laughs> um, I know uh, not much. No, I know that there's, uh, the Mona Lisa has been uh, has had a hell of a history to it. Uh, it's been stolen a few times. Yep. There's been other ones that have been claimed to be uh, the original. I don't know a fortune about it. I'm not a, a art historian. 
But yeah, I know that, that that painting has got a hell of a history behind it. And there's actually an image on now of the two Mona Lisas. One of one of them obviously has been, an uh, Instagram fault has been applied to it yeah. on the left and then the original on the right. I wish there was a third one of a stick figure. It, it should be, because yeah. that would have been the one that I would have sold for, for 50,000 Rand. Uh, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. But just in closing, if you're an artist and you think you've got some talent and skill, get representation, possibly get an affiliation with a gallery and you, you'll be protected, correct? Yeah, well, I mean, the person that's going to protect you best is yourself, but, you know, if you're an artist, your work is your, your thing of value, so you need to, to uh, manage your career, put the right people in place in order to make sure that you get to market, get paid, and have a longevity of yeah. your career. You find yourself a good lawyer with great hair, man. Yes. That's where it all starts. <laughs> um, if you're interested in uh, a private viewing of any of Carl's artwork, his stick figure men going That's now correct. for, what, 45,000? Uh, I'm going to go 42 for you. 42,599 Rand. Perfect. Get it at a steal. Uh, Aitan, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so Thanks, much for that. Guys. <laughs> We are definitely back in the kitchen and it's time to cook up something delicious. Now get this, self-sourcing pudding. What does that even mean? Essentially, it's a pudding that creates its own sauce. But in our kitchen, we are taking this classic winter favorite and taking it up a level, you know how we do. We will be showing you how quick and easy this mouth-watering fudgy chocolate dessert is to put together. And get this. It won't take you longer than 30 minutes, and that is why Michaela is my best friend, because you're gonna make this less than 30 minutes. Girl, I'm about the convenience. I'm about something that requires me to do nothing at all. So and just throw it all together. Throw it all together. That's the whole purpose of this recipe. Welcome back, good morning. It's Thank good you. to connect with you again. Yeah. Take us you too. through it. Okay, so there was a bit of trial and error that went into this recipe. Um, originally, it was you bake the base of it, and then you add the sauce. Um, but it didn't quite work out so well. <laughs> so today we're starting with the sauce first, get that ready, and then pour the sauce over the base and bake it all together. Ooh, yeah. got it. I mean, trial and error, we all have to go through exactly. it. Exactly. It comes out to, to that beautiful. So we're starting with some So we already water. have some water boiling in there. We're just gonna add some cream <laughs> okay, into some cream. there. Yellow. Then some sugar. Uh, that was a bit chunky. You had me at 30 minutes. To be honest, anything that is going to take me only 30 minutes in the kitchen, sold. I don't have a lot of time. I have a little one, I have mommy, and I have to go train and do so many things. So 30 minutes for me to spend time in the kitchen works for me. And you get to please everyone because it's chocolate. It's who doesn't like chocolate. Jamie, could you do me a favor and start on the wet ingredients there for me? Okay. So just. Put them all together. Okay, so we have some vanilla paste going in here. Do I have a spoon we now? Do. Some vanilla paste. I'm just going to use that. And then we have um, milk going in. A singular egg and a some butter. And some melted butter. So what I'm doing is just mixing some sugar, cocoa, um, cream Ooh. and water together until the sugar has completely melted. And then we're going to pour in some dark chocolate. Mm. Um, and just let that melt off the hob. Hob. Who says that? Um, you say that, you, I say, you that. say that. <laughs> Stealing that. Okay. That goes. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Whisk it away. I don't know why. So this morning, I just feel like everyone is letting me do all the hard work in the kitchen. Early on, Carl made me whisk. It was arm day yesterday. Do you guys not get that? My body is sore. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, you, you know, the I'm next teasing. day after arm day, you should just keep going because then you'll feel better the third day. The third day. Okay. So I'll look forward to tomorrow then. <laughs> cool. So that's, that's all melted, and we're just pouring the chocolate, and then we add the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. So we have some flour here, we have some caster sugar, mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. Just to break that all in. Do you need, do you need me? <laughs> it's not coming up. <laughs> Trial and error. Trial and error. <laughs> there we go, use your fingers, get in to the mixture. And, and we have some cocoa powder. Yummy. Because the chocolatier, the better. The better. Okay, so if you could just Is that good? That Are you in. happy with yeah. Perfect. And then I'm whisking away. Exactly, until it's just combined. Got that. Again, whisking away. <laughs> just be careful so you don't splatter it all over your um, face and outfit. That's a different sort of baking. <laughs> so you need <laughs> to mix this together. Perfect. And then you just want to alternate to a spatula just so we can wipe all the, just yep. give it a good old 
There we go. Nice. You see, I'm, I'm messing everywhere. And we just wipe down the sides because you always want to get the ingredients off the sides. Otherwise, you get little chunky bits in the pudding. And what's left over on the bowl is you can just take a spoon later and sit in front of the TV <laughs> while you wait for this to bake and just lick it in. So then we have a greased um, little pan over here and we just pour it on in. Mm, yummy. How good does that look? That already looks so good. Of course, if you want to get your hands on the full ingredient list and the recipe, expressoshow.com is where you can find that. And you're just going to flatten it flatten on out. out. And then we're going to bake this in the oven at 180 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. And then we take it out and hopefully then it will be a beautiful self-sourcing pudding. So you just pour some of this over the top. Wow. wow. <laughs> the fact that we said it at the same time. I know. Wow, look at that. And then you pop it on in. Pop it on in. And then obviously you get that deliciousness over there. Throw some classic custard over that and dinner or your dessert is served in less than 30 minutes. That is a win-win for me. Michaela, you are always so amazing. And of course, you can get your hands on expressoshow.com. Mm, yum, yum. I think I'm going to go taste that one. <laughs> you could always um, drink some of the sauce. It's basically like a hot chocolate now. Okay. Well, pour that in for me for, in the meantime. <laughs> it's weird. Wait, let me go ahead. Mmm. Thick, fudgy dessert. I actually want to put some of this in. Perfect, you definitely want to get your hands on this, everybody. Just don't take a bite and then smile, because you might have a bit of a... I won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't smile. <laughs> wow. It is so good. It's just, uh, I went to, I was looking at it earlier and I got lost in the dreamy chocolatey. Ooh, <laughs> <absolutely> beautiful. <laughs> but as I say, a good food, good mood, baby. And now you can get creative with the new cookware range from Smeg. Okay, so here's the good news, right? I know you want the good news. You stand a chance to win a four piece matte black set of your own. Now, yesterday we asked you what the first meal you'd prepare in your Smeg cookware is. And let's find out what a few of you had to say. Mm, Sharon Sheldon weighed in with. I've been saying that I need this cooker. I've been saying it. She's been saying it herself. Such a fantastic giveaway. I would make lamb curry with roti for oh. a lovely evening supper. My family loves my curry evenings. So I'm looking forward to preparing this meal in these stunning black smeg cookware. Hashtag Woolies smeg. Hashtag espresso show. I like uh, that it's a curry evening. It's yes. not a meal. It's a whole evening I, experience. I'm, I'm ready for that. Then Rina Ramsudi said, hashtag Woolies smeg. I would prepare my amazing, here it comes again, mutton oh, curry oh, with some nice. roti in these a new <laughs> Smeg cookware. And of course, I think they would complement each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. Smeg has the best cookware and appliances. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Uh, Rita Jardim said, hashtag Willie Smeg, with this crazy cold weather out there, the very first meal I will prepare with my new Smeg cookware set would be my all-time favorite Woolies pork shank curry and Oof. white aromatic but smart rice with some woolies ready prepared seasonal veggies mm. lightly steamed to preserve the aroma of the cookware set will add value to my kitchen and my home yeah yeah really lots well of curry eh? it seems to be a trend though curry seems to be the most popular choice this winter i, I can completely mm -hmm. agree i could eat curry every day remember one very lucky viewer still stands a chance to win a four-piece matte black smeg cookware Beautiful. set to the value of twelve thousand eight hundred bucks that's an investment right there yeah. simply reply to the competition post on the Express of Facebook or our Twitter page with the hashtag Willie's Smeg and tell us what's the first meal you'd prepare in your Smeg cookware. That competition closes on midnight, Sunday the 6th of June 2021. Visit expressoshow.com for T's and C's. We should change it to what curry would you prepare as the first exactly. meal? Ah, hey, how's that weight in your hand? This eh? is just, I, I want one. Eh? Just letting you know. I just want one. But okay, you're going to get one. Just enter the competition. You're not and allowed to enter. There we go. I know I'm not, but it's fine. <laughs> Enjoy. A healthier you starts with you and your plate. Join us on a nourishing journey by entering to be on SABC 2's new show, Color Your Plate with Koo. To be part of the show, buy any three Koo products and send Koo 5 a day to 072-741-5357 on WhatsApp. Follow the steps to load a picture of your colorful meal served and stand to win prizes valued at 500,000 rands with Koo. Koo. Uzotwala.
I love the sound of this. A fresh new entrepreneurship space, if you will, called the Arts at ACP. It's being opened at the American Corner in Pretoria, located in the Eskia Mpahlele Community Library in Chwane. Go and check it out if you can. Now, joining us via video call all the way from Los Angeles is Alexandra Grant, an artist who has played an integral part in the art installation in the space called the Democratization of Arts. And she is here to tell us all about it. A very good morning or good evening, both together to you, Alexandra. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you for having me. Um, so good to connect with you on the other side of the world because it just reinforces the idea that we really have become, I think, more now than ever after this last year, a global village. But you have decided to extend your reach all the way to beautiful Pretoria. Why did you get involved in this project? What was your motivation initially? I was invited uh, to come and work with a group of young artists and poets to create a mural in the ACP space. And it was supposed to be in person. Uh, and unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we've had to make do with doing everything via Zoom, which has actually been really, really, it's been wonderful for me to see and get to meet everyone and then let them just elaborate this incredible artwork. Well, to elaborate on that, you've obviously had to kind of take the, the notion of skills transferal to a whole different level through this reimagined process. What skills were imparted with the facilitators in order for them to be able to kind of interpret the, the spoken written art into the visual art? How did that process play out? I was able to work with a great uh, duo of poets who created a poem called A Celebration that's all about how we are like books in a library. So I think because the ACP is in a library that really resonated with people and then we just created a way of mapping their poem. So finding key words that people could draw. And then in my workshops on Zoom, I had people draw the same word. And what you could see is that everyone interprets a word like frog absolutely differently. So it was really about setting a framework, setting a stage, and then inviting people to the celebration to have fun drawing together. And it didn't end there because you've now opened it up to the public to weigh in, to have their voices heard or seen, if you will. How did uh, we see the facilitators training translate into the public now contributing to the installation while it was at the American Corner? Well, they learned how uh, a welcoming, how to be great hosts. So they have aprons, people can come and, you know, paint without feeling like they're going to get their clothes dirty. They um, <laughs> are welcome to interpret. You know, no one needs to be an artist is the coolest part of it. You know, that they, all you had to do was find a word or a phrase that resonated with you. And then you were handed a pencil or a, a paintbrush and you could participate. So I think it really was the spirit that the, the facilitators who are ambassadors, maybe for the poem, um, that they uh, basically were, were hosting a really wonderful dinner party with people they've never met. So I think that if I did anything, it would set the tone for that dinner party. <laughs> I love that. I'd, I'd let you host me at least once a week. I, I really would. Yeah. You seem like the most interesting person. And I absolutely love the fact that, that this is at its heart about connectedness. And boy, haven't we needed to, to feel reconnected with each other um, over this last crazy year. And of course, this moment has been captured in a time-lapse movie of the project being created. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? Well, it's an incredible thing when you tell a group of people who are strangers to each other, you're going to draw a poem together. <laughs> and they face sort of empty white space and they see these key words in the poem on post-it notes and they can't imagine what it will look like in one day, in two days. So what a time-lapse allows is it captures that first moment where the, you know, the walls are empty and then little by little, a viewer can see what it means to add on to a drawing that another person made and often when you weren't there. So I think that's the coolest part of it is that people are collaborating with each other, but maybe not at the same time, which is of course safe for the pandemic, but also super interesting um, to see, oh wait, I did that part, you know, four days ago. And you really get that in the spirit of the time-lapse. 
Uh, I absolutely love that. You have a radiant smile. You have a radiant spirit. I cannot wait for you to host me for dinner the next time I'm in LA. And I hope that's sooner rather than later. But thank you so much for giving so much of that spirit to South Africa. We've had a very difficult time over the last year and a bit. And something like this I know is going to inspire people, get people talking. But most importantly, let people feel connected, not just here, but globally. So thank you so, so much for that. Thank you for having me, and I can't wait to visit Pretoria, too. Maybe our dinner will be there. I love it. I don't <laughs> mind hosting you any time. Um, an amazing Thank collaboration you. that displays the universal accessibility of art. I actually just loved how Graham nicely flirted his way to LA there. It was fantastic. But you know what? Art is unifying and it is beautiful. And that's why we visited the Eskim Pachlele Community Library in the heart of uh, the city of Chwane to capture the makings of a beautiful mural. And while we're there, we also had a chance to interview some of the artists as well as the poets Fadzai Novo Dube and Desire Notkolo Mashlangu, who wrote the poem A Celebration That Inspired the Art. Through the difficult times of this COVID pandemic, we've used American Corner Pretoria as the space where local people in Pretoria and surrounds can come and use their skills and develop themselves, uh, you know, to create better opportunities for themselves. The U.S. Embassy decided to do a two-part program. The first part of the program was our Arts Envoy, where we invited American artist Alexandra Grant to come and do a virtual workshop with our eight amazing selected art facilitators, who are local South African artists, fine artists, visual artists, children's books, writers, etc., and to teach them methodologies on how to take the written language and, you know, turn that into visual art. Um, the reason why I chose to apply for this program, it was because of it came in at a great timing since I'm an artist and I've just completed my advanced diploma. So I needed something that would actually put my, my, my skills into training so that I can actually engage with the public art space and also with the people around the art space as well. So I wanted to, to, to really practice my skills and start putting them into good use here. Yeah. The experience for me has been good so far because I met different people. Um, I've learned a lot from them, um, so yes, it's been a great experience. Then the second part of the program was to get those eight art facilitators here into our amazing American Corner space in Samimark Square in Pretoria and come and uh, you know, instill some, some vibe and some energy into this space and basically be a part of Chwane's artistic history. poem that was written by two local artists, Fadzai Nova Dube and Notola Desire, and it's called The Celebration, and uh, it, it's basically about life itself, all the eccentricities and everything that, that comes together using words, and uh, basically a celebration of poetry in, its, in itself. Beyond our teaching of judging people by their covers or the contents of their pages because it's different from our own, we birth an opportunity to find a peace we've never known. Aren't we just beautiful in our sun-kissed hues of skin? Let our kin not get lost in translation or marred by segregation. Let our books pass down as tradition to nourish coming generations. We are all books in this library with different stories and identities. To read is to join the celebration. Are you here for the festivities? The poem is called The Celebration, and I co-wrote it with Notolo Desire. And basically, the poem is about celebrating each other's differences and embracing diversity. And you know, books carry so much meaning, and basically the poem is about celebrating that, celebrating knowledge, celebrating diversity, and and instead of us as a society looking at how we're different, the poem encourages us to embrace what, what's similar between us, you know, and celebrating diversity. 
So yeah, I think that's one of the most amazing things about this project. You get to learn along the way and it never stops. So what makes this location unique is Eskia Patlele Community Library here in Sammy Mox Square in Pretoria is that it allows the public, anybody in the public, to come in here, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an artist, you're a business person, you can come in here, use our facilities, create opportunities for yourself, network with your people and improve your life. Amazing. That, of course, was the fresh new arts and entrepreneurship space called Arts at ACP at Eskia Mpashla Lele Community Library in Pretoria. An initiative by the U.S. Embassy that brought local artists and poets together with an accomplished and well-known American visual artist named Alexandra Grant to contribute to a collaborative and permanent mural installation at American Corner, Pretoria. We love art and we love to see art from all over the world unify, especially in this beautiful country, South Africa. It's my feel-good breakfast show. So these guys, Indie Dog, they've been rocking the show. And a little earlier, they actually told me that they do some improv. And I thought on your feel-good breakfast show on Expresso S3, they should do some improv. I feel like it's an important thing. This is what they do. This is how you roll. Do you mind just before your, your performance? Yeah. Is it okay? So long as, you, so long as you're singing. Am I singing with this microphone here? Yeah. Okay, okay. let's go. Oh, there's so much verb in this. This is great. So how does the improv work? How do you guys do this? So let's just say we've got a beat. Like, like feel-good feel breakfast, breakfast show, show. and then espresso. espresso. All, right. All right, can I do the rock voice? Here we go. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Indie Dog has got this vibe. You know you're part of the espresso tribe. You know we're rocking and you know it's good. From the kitchen, we've been making a food. You know we love it, we do it every morning. You know we love it, you'll never be morning. We love the happy, the vibe, the class. You know we'll get you shaking your... I can't say that on TV, but you know you can see me. Every no it's on S3, and we all gonna break in and get crazy now with Indy Dog. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. It's Indie Dog! Ooh. 
Quick, even though it's morning, but I just wanted to do that with the rock band. That's fantastic. Any dog, that song's still pretty full. They got another song for you, and you just have to stick around for that. This is Express on S3, and if you're wondering about the news around you, don't worry, Jamie's got you covered. Two minutes before 8 o'clock, time to have a final look at those news headlines. Starting with your national news, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced during the presidency's budget post in Parliament that a further 11 billion rand had been allocated for the presidential stimulus program for job creation in the current financial year. He said the program had already assisted numerous families who had no income during the COVID-19 pandemic. He also added that a newly created project management office in the presidency had played an important role in the program program's success. Now, this office ensures effective coordination when various government departments and agencies are involved in a program. Staying with local news as well, a 39-year-old man has been arrested after being found in possession of compressed pure cocaine valued at some 400 million rand. Now, police made the arrest on the N1 North near the R21 flying saucer interchange. Police spokesperson Colonel Katlejo Mojale said a bucky that was towing a 12-foot uh, ski boat was stopped after a tip-off. Now, officers found 800 kilograms of compressed pure cocaine. Investigations are continuing and more arrests are imminent. The commanding officer of the Hawks, uh, Lieutenant General Godfrey Lebea, praised the police for their work. Moving further abroad with our international news, Air Zimbabwe has resumed domestic flights after they were grounded for most of last year due to COVID-19 and operational challenges. There was much jubilation when a recently acquired Embraer plane landed at Victoria Falls International Airport yesterday afternoon. There will be flights from Harare to Victoria Falls via Bulawayo four times a week. And in March, the government also launched a vaccination drive in Victoria Falls to create herd immunity and encourage tourists to return. Other airlines like FastJet and Airlink have already resumed flights to the resort city. And then a chemical-laden cargo ship is sinking off the coast of Sri Lanka, sparking fears of a huge environmental disaster. The Singapore-registered Express Pearl had been on fire for almost two weeks before the blaze was put out this week. Hundreds of tons of oil could leak into the sea if this happens, devastating nearby marine life and some of the country's most pristine beaches. Now, the Sri, the Sri Lankan and Indian navies had worked jointly over the past days in an attempt to avert a horrendous disaster. And now some news for South Africa. South Africa's two-time Olympic gold medalist and three-time world champion who holds uh, the South Africa women's records over every distance from 400 to 1,500 meters, 30-year-old Costa Semenya can proudly boast another feather in her cap. She has just bagged a B.Tech degree in sports management from the Twane University of Technology, TAT. Now, after matriculating from Nthema Senior Secondary School in Limpopo in 2008, Semenya then opted to move to Port of in 2015, where she earned a diploma in sports science from Northwest University. After this, she then enrolled for the above-mentioned degree at TAT in 2018 and subsequently moved back to Pretoria after signing a deal as sports ambassador for the institution. Semenya is, of course, one of South Africa's most accomplished athletes in any sport. She has juggled her studies and athletic career for more than a decade while being locked in a lengthy court battle in an attempt to have controversial gender rules overturned. As of now, she's also trying to qualify for this year's Tokyo Olympics in the 5,000-meter event after being prevented from competing in a specialist, the 800-meter distance. On that note, that is where I wrap your news headlines. Here's G1 last time with our sports news. Thanks so much, Jamie. We, of course, uh, dip our hats uh, to Casta Semenya. Incredible achievement there. But let's kick off our bulletin, our final one for the day. In fact, with footballing news, Kaiser Chiefs have kept their very faint hopes of finishing in the Premier Soccer League top eight alive after a hard-fought 3-2 victory over Golden Arrows at the FNB Stadium last night. Michael Gumede, he opened the scoring in the 21st minute to give the visitors the early lead. Then Lebochum Manyama, who was on fire last night, netted the equaliser nine minutes later to make it one apiece after challenging for the ball in the second half. I'm a Kozi defender, Eric Matoho. He scored an own goal to give Arrows the lead once again. But then Manyama scored his second and third goal to seal the win for the Soweto Giants. They've moved up now to ninth place on the standings. And in fact, they play TS Galaxy or one space above them at eighth in their final game of the season. Going to be an interesting run in. Now on to tennis, Serena Williams. She continued her bid for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title after easing into the third round of 
of the French Open yesterday. The 39-year-old American beat Romania's Mihaela Buzarnescu, ranked 174th in the world at the moment, 6-3-5-7-6-1 last night. The former champion and seventh seed Williams will now meet fellow American Danielle Collins in the third round tomorrow. And then finally, on to cricket, as roughly 6,500 fans returned to the traditional home of cricket in London. It was New Zealand's debutant, Devon Conway, who stole the show with a brilliant unbeaten 136 on day one of the first test against England. The South African-born Conway became just the sixth batsman in history to score 100 on test debut at Lords. The 29-year-old anchored the visitors to an impressive 246 for three on the first day. Day two of that action between England and the Black Caps will continue at Lords Cricket Ground from 12 p.m. South African time today. Well, that's a wrap of your sport for this Thursday morning. Let's get one last look at some of your beautiful sunrise pictures. Thank you to each of you that take the time to share your sunrise views with us. It really is a great way to start our day. And this is the end credits of some incredible uh, sunrise pictures submitted this morning. Now, we kicked off with a gorgeous image of the sun casting a beautiful golden hue across the sky from Abhishek Budram from Durban and Eric Lottering. Thanks to you from Bedford View in Gauteng. Also shared this stunning photo taken of the sun breaking through the clouds. At 7 a.m., Mandy Tainsma from Cape Town shared this beautiful photo of the Cape Town sky showing off hues of blue, pink, and yellow. And and last but not least, Monique Jerling from Khebecha posted this gorgeous image of the sun rising, and that is over the ocean. Thank you so much for these. These are gorgeous. We're definitely so fortunate to experience such breathtaking sunrises here in South Africa, and we just love seeing the photos you capture. So please do continue to share your sunrise photos with us, as well as your location on the Expresso Facebook page. Now, while we love seeing the various parts of South Africa, we also love exploring and learning about the different cultures and countries internationally. So this morning, if you have any viewers tuned in on the Africa channel or YouTube who are based in Singapore, this one is just for you. Officially the Republic of Singapore, it is a sovereign island city-state in maritime Southeast Asia. Singapore has the world's highest percentage of millionaires, believe it or not, with one out of every six households having at least one million US dollars of disposable wealth. Tourism is a major industry and contributor to the Singaporean economy, attracting 18.5 million international tourists in 2018, more than three times Singapore's total population. Today, Singapore can expect intervals of clouds and sunshine with a couple of showers, mainly early in the day, reaching a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius. To my family in Singapore, don't forget your cousin, Carl. Moving on to some weather news. The Weather Service has forecast heavy rainfall over the southern part of KwaZulu-Natal and also warned of cold temperatures, especially in high-lying areas. It says the downpour may cause localized flooding. Extremely cold temperatures, especially in high-lying areas in Drakensberg, where it's currently snowing, can also be expected. A video circulating on social media show roads and vehicles covered in snow in Klutu in Zululand, where it uh, lost and snowed in 2004. Now, forecaster uh, Julius Maklango said the snowfalls over areas surrounding the Drakensberg are due to an upper system, which is known as a cutoff low. He said after the cutoff low, they are expecting a cold front to move through today, followed by a reaching high-pressure system, which is also expected to bring in more cooler conditions over the province. The Department of Cooperative Governance in KwaZulu-Natal has meanwhile placed disaster management teams on high alert. Over to a last look at the temperatures across the country and starting off with Polokwane. 5 to 18 for you today. Pombela, 12 to 19. Pretoria, you can expect 5 this morning, rising to 18. Johannesburg, 3 to 15. Mai King, 3 to 21 for you. Clarkstorp, 1 to 17. Uh, Kimberley, you started minus 1, believe it or not. 18 is your high. Bloemfontein, 1 to 20. Richards, Bay, a 60% chance of precipitation in your area, 8 to 20 for you. Same thing in Peter Maritzburg, expect that rain. Uh, Durban, 13 to 18, a 80% chance of rain if it's not raining already. Mtata, 9 to 11. East London, 14 to 17 with a 60% chance of rain. Craddock, you can expect 6 this morning, rising to 13. Kabecha, 8 to 18. George, 8 to 17. Cape Town, 9 to 19. Uh, Worcester, 5 to 21. Sutherland, 0 to 15. And wrapping up with Uppington as all always two and that rises to 22 degrees celsius a touch later that's a wrap of your weather news as well as your temperatures have yourself a fantastic day today and if you do have a good sunrise photos please send it over to uh, to the expressive facebook page as we get some self-love and you've been telling us exactly what that one thing is that you love about yourself let's find out what that is i love myself 
Oh, won't you? You remember when they'd come in a club and everyone would be like, oh, I love myself. No, no. You must love yourself. Self-love is a vitally important thing. Um, and I'm so glad that you are taking the time with us this morning to really explore the things about yourself that you love. So let's find out what you had to say this morning after our request. And Benzi Benzini saying, good morning. One thing I like about myself is good attitude to bad people. That's a good skill to have. Definitely. And then Zania Trump says, my ability to make people feel good about Aww. themselves, no matter how I might be feeling inside, and also the way I love my family. Yeah, I'm with you there. I actually, that's, that's something that's important to me. So Lisa was saying, I love myself to preach the word of God and make my family happy and protected. Here, yeah, here, yeah. preach it, sister. We also have Cecilia van Veek, if we can get that comment to come up. I wonder what so, Cecilia, now I'm desperate see, to know what <laughs> Cecilia loves about herself. She says, I love my big heart, my big energy, my big aura, my big love. Wow, big ups. Like all of that big. big ups to you, <laughs> see what you did Cecilia. Absolutely beautiful. Um, it can be anything. The most important aspect here is take the time to consider what about yourself that you do love. And most importantly, love yourself because you've got a lifelong journey with yourself you've got to come to terms with it but thank you so much some great comments coming through from you this morning we're going to continue on that conversation at espresso show Yeah, man, take your cue from the music. It's time to get pumped. Woo! My goodness. Now, earlier this year, Samsung debuted its 2021 Neo QLED TV in South Africa with a lineup that delivered an entirely new kind of display technology, better than your own eyes, including breathtaking picture quality, unique sound innovations and design upgrades that have pretty much redefined what a TV can do. And who better to join us this morning than the most excited human being on earth, our gaming guru Grant Hines, to chat more about the hype around this TV and it's completely warranted. It's overall gaming experience and unique qualities that South Africa have wholeheartedly embraced and looking at it it is very 
easy to understand why. Wow, dude. TV technology is very hard for me to demonstrate to you how impressive this is, but off camera, everybody was looking at this. Because you're now having to see this through your own yeah, TV yeah, we, right you now. Have to, yeah, you I have wish to we could send you through. all this TV to look at this TV because but Goodness the reason it's so crisp buddy. and the reason it's so sharp wow. is that there's a whole bunch of brand new technology. That's why Neo, Neo being new, a QLED, quantum LEDs, and it's, it's literally like a quantum leap in television technology that Samsung are doing here. And the, where it comes in is that LEDs are usually little lights that yeah, you yeah. see on your screen. We actually have a, like a demonstration here on the front. Those lights on the left are what you usually get on your TVs at home. And you probably, if you've got a flat screen, you're probably using that. The new quantum mini LEDs that Samsung have used on here are 40 times smaller yeah. and that's important because it's part of a matrix a new matrix that they put on on the back panel that allows it to be sharper so the bigger your lights are think about this at home with the normal lights but the bigger your lights are the more light the bleed there is sure so the light shines to other pixels around it so it doesn't become as sharp but because the pixels are so small and because they've got such a great uh, matrix on the back, where, uh, an array where those uh, LEDs are put, it becomes so sharp. Look at Graham. First of all, how did that go get there? <laughs> First of all, okay. <laughs> Second of all, I wasn't aware that I, you could see the, the emotion in the goat's eye, okay. So to get things that sharp with that new technology is, is unheard of. And you've got to see it. You've got to walk into a store and see it for yourself. You're not going to see it on your TVs at home. It's also 8K, which means that it's... Uh, it's twice the resolution of 4K. So, like, if a normal 4K is what, what like pretty high end right now, and uh, if you've got a, a 1080p panel at home, you don't even know what you're in for when you're looking at an 8K panel, which is which is wild. So that's even sharper. So the higher resolution you get, plus these mini LEDs, means a sharper experience, and also there's a higher contrast ratio. So the colors are richer. That's what you actually are yeah, seeing now. No, Graham's mesmerized. I, I'm just popping. trying to talk. No, because I've got. I'm going to talk to the audience at home. Okay, yeah, exactly. they're listening to me. I'm, I'm kind of all I'm hearing is blah, 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 in the background. No, I'm, I'm kidding, dude. Because I, I I know your passion for good new tech, and it's something that you have to be blatantly and bluntly honest about because this is your playground. How cool is it to get something like this where you can actually go, wow, this is a, a game changer? If you take some of the kind of technical jargon out of it, what are the first things that a person will notice about having this beautiful thing in their home? Man? Okay, first up, it's the high resolution, sharper, high contrast images. Also, the frame rate, which means that the pictures are going to look and appear smoother. If you've got a gaming console, this is the TV to get this range because uh, it's got 100, it can do 120 uh, FPS, can support that. If you've got a new generation console, so like a, uh, like a brand new one that came out this year, PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X, you're going to get the most out of that you're console. You're going to get the full potential. And yeah. here's the thing, because it's 8K and it's got a brand new processor, for those of you at home, it means it's the brain inside the TV that's doing all the work, translating that image to you. What it's doing is it's going to take that 4K image that you've got, if you've got Blu-rays, if you're a movie fundy, you'll know what I'm talking about here, and then it intelligently stretches it out to fill the frame and give you an 8K-like experience with 4K. So you get a whole new experience with the existing games that you have on your games consoles and the existing films that you have if you're a film nut. Yeah, I've, I've honestly, I've been lucky enough to walk this path with, with Samsung for a while now, so I'm constantly like, wow, this is a quantum leap forward, wow, this is a quantum leap forward, but this, this I've never seen no, you, quality I mean, like you, this before. You, I mean, it, yeah, you're, st you're staring at it. And yeah. the other thing that they've done, which is really cool, is the sound. A lot of TVs are just stereo, left and right. At, at home, again, you're probably watching this on a stereo TV, but there's this whole thing called Object Tracking Sound Pro, which if you look at, the, you, we're not going to go behind the screen right now, but there, there's literally a speaker array right at the back on the left, right, and top and bottom, and wherever an object is on screen, the sound will come through that. So if you've got a sound bar specifically, it will sound amazing because it will then include the sound bar in this array. So if somebody's walking from left to right, you'll feel it through your through your lounge without having to have surround sound like system around you. Like a full-on sound you. system set up in your house. Yeah, it's it's, it's a one-stop shop. It's absolutely amazing. Let's let's continue on the gamers track because I think. Those will probably be the people that are the most excited about something that offers this kind of quality. Expand on why this is the TV to have if you're an avid gamer. Okay, so the new consoles were released uh, late last year. A lot of people have bought them or a lot of people want to buy them. And if you are a gamer that's
that's planning on upgrading or planning on getting a new console, it, the big things are that they're 4K resolution and they're 120 frames a second. Those are big performance boosts for, for games. This TV is future-proofing yourself for that. You're gonna get the best experience because not only is it just taking that 4K signal and upscaling it to 8K, so you're getting a better resolution, you're also, um, you also get that frame rate uh, with, with your console on the screen. So you literally are getting the best experience. And just a, look, a little anecdote, this is the remote control for the TV, and it's solar, to, it's solar powered, oh, so, you can, so you don't have to charge it necessarily if you're in the sun, and then it's got a USB charger here, so no more sickling with batteries, batteries. or the batteries <laughs> falling out, or the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, is, this is also just like such a great quality, quality of life. Deciding which remote's gonna work and then taking the batteries out of this and putting it in and taking it out of this. Yeah. Of this. What are we sacrificing, yeah, the blender or the yeah. TV today? Oh, I'm sorry, your little LED Christmas tree light, you're gone, really, let's take the batteries out of that. Uh, what's your favorite feature? My favorite feature is the AK. Okay. Like being able to upscale with a processor in here to that size, there's nothing like it on the market. So you're literally getting such a, uh, an incredible image and I cannot wait to play some games on this. Yeah, I've no doubt, my friend. And you're already working with the best. Just to see you this impressed is, is impressive in itself. And I like what you said about future proofing because it means the next console that comes out, this is probably gonna be fine for that and the next one. And the a next one. a lot of people who are buying TV is always concerned because there's always a new thing. But future proofing yourself with this fundamental mental technology means that you're going to have a TV for a very long period of time and that anything that you or the media that you consume either games or movies are going to be covered all right well it's samsung which means we have to give something away we're not giving this away <laughs> this we're keeping man we're going to keep it right here just for you um, but we've got a really really cool opportunity to for you to win a samsung sound tower that's going to enhance your game what we want you to do is reply to the competition post on the express of facebook twitter or instagram page name two of the unique features of the samsung neo q LED TV. We've given you many. Don't forget to use the <laughs> hashtags uh, Samsung Neo Q LED and Samsung Sound Tower to enter. But you can find all the terms and conditions on expressoshow.com. As always, the competition is going to run up until Friday the 4th of June. So you've just got limited time. Get on it. Uh, While well, Grant just enjoys his love affair with this <laughs> amazing uh, TV, we're going to continue to celebrate the power of love. I mean, come on. Jeez. Yeah, look at that. I'm like, an, I'm really in love with that TV. I won't lie to you. That's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna snap out of it. Love is a powerful thing, as you can see. And we're diving deep into a little conundrum for you that may leave us questioning just how powerful love can be. It's time for another round of Would You Rather. And I need to invite in a very special person who has also fallen in love with a TV. It must have been love, <laughs> but it's <laughs> over now. That's it. Karaoke even on oh. a, a Thursday. That works for me. So. Okay. Emily and Graham, I've got what, a scenario you for you, and the scenario is, okay, I want you to think, conceptualize. You're on a first date, and Ooh. you think you've met the love of your life. Oh, mm -hmm. so me, that's so me. They <laughs> are wonderful, super good looking. Wow. But, but, oh, oh. they chew with their mouth open. Ooh, this is where Would You Rather comes in. Would you rather politely ask them to chew with their mouth closed, or be wrap up the evening fast and never see them again. What are you thinking? You know, my dates I'd be kissing before the food would start coming <laughs> out anyway. So wait, no, I'm kidding. I, it's okay, it's, um, a, it's an open space, Jim. Yes, it is, I, come on, yeah, feel free. No, nah, I'd, if, 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 honestly, if I loved them, because trust me, once you, you become closer to a person, you're gonna discover all sorts of foibles that you're like, wow, okay, you actually do that, okay. Um, so just be open, honest, talk about it, just say, it's crazy, I've noticed that. <laughs> it's crazy, you just start saying it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, tell me, the crazy okay, thing is, I, but I'd, I'd started yeah. like, you know, I always used to eat with my mouth open, and then I realized that it was damaging my jaw. Oh. So do you have a sore jaw? Um, no, I don't know, actually, you it's a so tough sweet. one. You okay. are so sweet, you are so sweet. Let's try, let's just focus here. On your last date, because you date, hey. <laughs> So what are we doing? I want you to tell me to stop. Are you, would you, what are you going to do? You, you didn't stop? ask me the question. So, I didn't answer. I wouldn't tell you to stop. I would just leave. Would you leave? I would this leave. Is this is like, never see them like, again. Don't. This is Jamie's so what like, would you do? Would you ball? go to the bathroom quickly and then never come back to the table? <gasps> Probably. I knew it. She has but that I, strategy. I'd play the ball. I'd play the, no, I'm joking. I would just do this. I have this thing when you're doing something awkward, yes. I would do it as well. So if you're chewing, I would just go. Oh, really? So then I go. Give them a taste of their own So almost just like look at me and then be like, Oh, oh, you must realize, if you don't realize after that, then I will leave. Because okay. I at least gave you like a... 
Okay, so you get a nice, polite sort of yeah. throw it into a conversation. Now, all the people that have been dating Jamie are like thinking, like, wow, she eats with her mouth open. Let's just like, there's a lot of people that have been dating me. Thank you, G. Yeah, lots, many. Many. <laughs> uh, and also, many comments that have come through on the Facebook page about this exact topic. And Let's uh, see I must what just, the I'm, I'm hoping say. that you're going to be nice. Let's start off. Becky's saying, bolt out, <laughs> not pay the bull. <laughs> Never see them again. <laughs> you're Hashtag the person. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Wowza. Okay. And then the next one, we go on to, okay. this is... Camsley. 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 She says, first date, the love of your life. Yeah. No wonder there's so many people uploading those sad joker quotes. Shay man, first date, pato. <laughs> oh, like, what man. is up? There's always one, eh? There's always one. Yeah, uh, Poppy's saying, A. Just A, not a. giving a like, classification. A, a. 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 just a. do it. You want some more? Okay, uh, what fine. What would you do? What would I do? Oh, you know what? I'm actually a lot, a lot like you in that way. I'd, I'd throw in the conversation. And I'll, I'll do like a story around like okay. Let's closed. do scenario. Okay, let's go. You know, you know, there's actually a friend of mine. Um, just I hope you're enjoying your dinner. Uh, mm -hmm. There's actually a friend of mine, and uh, it, it was so crazy. He noticed me chewing his mouth open mm -hmm. one day, and in front of all of my family, he just stood up and he said, "Hey, close your mouth." It was crazy. It was indeed. <laughs> so what psychologically I did with you, I, I cued you to where that topic came from, and then in your head you're thinking, "Where did the topic come from?" Yeah. And then you say, "Oh, am I chewing my mouth open?" What too? if they just mm. keep doing it? What they, they, they yeah. If they keep doing it, then that's where you consult B. <laughs> uh, so. Wazi said A, politely asked them to chew their mouth closed. And then, of course, a couple other comments, like Mbali saying that would probably be the last time he sees me. Don't want to put him through the horror of my family giving him and I weird looks once he digs into his plate of food. Ayusha saying, uh, lol. <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> tell him, let's play a game of whoever can chew with their mouth closed <laughs> for the longest gets a free dessert. <laughs> okay. Ayusha, I want to use that one. one. Yes. That's the, that's one. the well one. Well done. We're that's taking the one. So thank you for playing Would You Rather. Phenomenal. And I mean, okay, whether you chew with your mouth open or closed, it's none of our business. But what is our business is whatever, or shall I say, whether you've won this week's Omar Russ Samper and 1,000 Rand. And that's the cash prize. So catch Ooh. the winner announcement tomorrow and let's all celebrate the love with our mouth closed. Must have been love, <laughs> but, but it's all. Any time is dipping time when it's with the ones you love.
list that says you've arrived. We got her. Living a life of illusion. Leaving your finances on the rocks. In this world of Bazotina Bantu, do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously? It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on S3. Of course, it is Thursday. It's how to slay the Thursdays. And a queen once said, Ashley Graham is the queen, and she said this, I know my curves are sexy and I want everyone else to know that theirs are too. There's no reason to hide and every reason to flaunt it. Now, curves and shapely silhouettes should be embraced and all bodies should be embraced and celebrated. And of course, our resident fashion editor, Knox Muff, who is here to unpack the ideal wardrobe essentials that will complement and flaunt your curves proudly. A very good morning, Knox. Good morning. You're looking so cozy. I, this is a quick change. We had <laughs> a two-minute ad break, yes. and I was like, let's just show the people. Because this is what I love about this right yeah. now, is that everybody's embracing their body every single step of their journey. I love this. But what is the importance of dressing for your body type? Absolutely. I think the most thing that we want people to focus on is that your body, at any shape and form, is perfect for fashion. Styling is, it's just about really learning how fashion trends can then translate into your body. We've got so many different body shapes, particularly let's say if we're looking at the women's range specifically we've got apple bodies we've got pears we've got you know the hourglass and because I think there's a big focus on that hourglass because everyone wants a snatched waist we don't actually explore different ways in which someone maybe with a, a bigger top could want to dress and so it's about finding fashion items that really speak to your body and proportions how do we use those proportions in winter with the layering so that you look elongated or we just actually show off the curves that you have because there's no need to to, to lie about how good your body looks, whatever shape that is. For sure, and I used to be guilty of this as well. I used to, obviously being a bit more curvier, yeah. I used to no shy away from layers because I thought it would make me look frumpy yes. or when I didn't know how to cinch the waist. Mm. But what are some of the hottest trends when it comes to being a curvier woman? Yes, I think what's important is to understand that different fashion looks require different things. We, You and I have a different body, right? And our bodies have fluctuated, you know, people have seen that. Um, but it's about the look. So I like a knit dress, for instance, and this someone could say like, it's quite like a boxy kind of look. But what I'm doing is I'm playing with the proportions with the scarf being a bit longer. It's stopping before my waist. So you can't really see my shape, but the look in itself sorts it out. But obviously Woolworths has incredible items that you can focus on. So for instance, if we were to look at the denim, a denim is a great staple for any outfit. So they've got the beautiful um, high rise, um, curvy range which is incredible and what it does is that it allows actually for there to be no gap on the back now for girls who've got a bit of booty oh you i know. know the struggle the struggle at that back where you're like it's not closing and whatever belt you get it's not small <laughs> enough so these are actually jeans that speak to that they really don't allow for a gape um, they've got a good stretch material which is great for for the body and whichever proportions you're in um, so that's a great staple and then of course what you'll do is you'll use your fleece so your normal tops as kind of layerings and again it's to play with the proportion one longer one shorter um, if you've got a smaller waist you might want to make that focal point the waist. the waist and if then let's say you've got a great bust that you want to show then that becomes the focal point but it's about choosing a certain part for instance if we're leaning onto a more athleisure look I would pair this with maybe your wide leg culotte jeans which you've seen here so you know all of oh, these yes. these can be these are also these are kind of more your straight ones but here is kind of more the wide leg so i would pair this with a polar neck underneath anybody would look great in that because what it does is it focuses from the top and then gives us something else to to focus are you gonna on dance? the direction i was going to but fashion makes me do that um but there's so many ways to experiment with proportions and i mean even with your look we really wanted to play with a bit more of an athleisure. Stand up? yeah okay, please do so this is more of a deconstructed athleisure look we've played with the fleece there's a lighter um, knitwear underneath there and um, we would it would make sense to put a chunky one on there because of really you've got a nice bust which is great but we're not doing anything to hide that right we're just adding layers the neutral colors then will also play to your to your slender nature but of course the more curves that happen here we're focusing on them but working with the layers and the colors to do so and again I used to be so shy of this and I 
would think that it would be frumpy, but absolutely not. No. Again, we're embracing all of that. But exactly. you do have another model. I do have another that's model. That's going to show you how you're styling this. So yes. let's bring her in. Let's do that. Ooh, she cute. She though. cute. Hi. And she flies. So <laughs> I love the way that she's used um, the coat that we have here to cinch around the waist. Mm. Now, Okanya definitely has more of an hourglass body, but obviously those things change often. So here we're going to see a focus on the waist. And then if she just takes off those um, the coat, we've got the amazing um, curvy range that we're seeing here. The jeans are sitting on there like Shut a glove. Shut the front door. Look at that. There is not a gap at the back. Everything without a belt. This thing is sitting comfortably and literally catching every part of her body. We then pair that with a polar neck to elongate that neck from the coat there. We could have added another layer of a top there, but these are all just ways in which you can follow the body to a T and make winter look cozy, comfortable, and her silhouette is coming out amazingly. So, you know, you pair that with combat boots, we've given her a bit of height, but it's a very casual look um, that's got a bit of edge and definitely using layering at the top, the coat, the jeans, all of that to give her a bit more of a pronunciation on her body. Knox Muffy, here's the thing, you always come through, you always know just exactly how Girl. to slay everybody. <laughs> for, of course, for you at home, you can shop these inclusive winter looks and the also famous curvy denim that we just saw right now. It is banging and this is available at Woolworths, in store, online or on the Woolies app. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. What's Mass Effect about? And how does it intersect with film culture? <laughs> Let's see if we can answer these questions. It's the story of Commander Shepard, who can be John or Jane, pretty cool, depending on your preference, a soldier in the 22nd century. And the story's strongest non-game influence is probably, I'm told, Star Trek and all the films and shows inspired by the Enterprise's journey to the final frontier and beyond. But there's, of course, a strong Lucasfilm brand here too. And some have even called the series The Star Star Wars of the gaming universe, so consider this like the original trilogy. What is it actually all about? I'm so excited about you this. You are going to explain to us okay. because there is, uh, this game has a cult following. It does, um, and we've been burnt before, but when I started in video games, one of the first games that I ever reviewed was the original Mass Effect in 2007. I am old, I will, <laughs> like, please do not judge me for being so old. And uh, it blew my mind, because what it is, it's a space role-playing game, like you said, inspired by Star Trek, and you can uh, travel the, so basically, you, you can travel anywhere in the whole of uh, the Milky Way. 
Um, uh, and, I, and, and you go to a whole bunch of different solar systems. Daniel, who was on the show a little bit earlier, talking yeah, about the Dan, our first like, spiral galaxy. He, yeah. Like this is totally up his alley. Um, and uh, the, the real trick of the, the whole game is that you are part of many different species, uh, like human race is part of many different species in the galaxy, and outside the Milky Way, something's encroaching. Ooh. We don't know what it is, but there's a band together, all the species are getting together to find out what it is. Um, and you are one of these rogue units that are, uh, are trying to work it out. So because it's an RPG, there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of relationship building, and there's a lot of working out like who's who in the galaxy, who are your friends. These are our, uh, our current friends that we've taken with. He looks like a good friend to have, the big guy with the big guy. Rex, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, he's very cool. Role, yeah. Shame, his race has gone through a lot of turmoil, and you'll find that out throughout the whole trilogy. But if you have played the original trilogy you will know what a big deal this game is but if you haven't played it now's the perfect time she's busy fixing a uh, tying a shoelace tying shoelace mm -hmm. fixing something uh, these these people let me talk to this lady okay cool let's let's get into let's get into some action yeah man do it because you guys look like you're ready for something nefarious well something's going there, there's something on this planet that's been attacking us and we've got to find out what it is so there is Mass Effect, this is Mass Effect 1 that I'm showing you right now. The whole trilogy has been remastered. So Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. 2 is my favorite of the whole trilogy. Um, and with some incredible actors as well in, in, involved in the game. Uh, you might know um, uh, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Sheen's father, Martin Sheen. Yeah. He's the voice actor, uh, the main wow. voice actor in the game. And you could choose your character. Your Protagonist Shepherd can be anyone, male, female. We've just chosen a female uh, Shepherd for for this uh, for this story that we're playing. And your character, there's our spaceship. Look at it. Look at it in all its, it's glory. So beautiful. And the remaster has just got some amazing, like obviously upgrades. We're playing on the new Samsung TV here, and you just see the resolution. Yeah, it's like, I know it's crazy it's, good. It's wild. So it's 4K scaled up to up K uh, to 8K. It's just oh, what really I loved pretty. was watching you go through all like the settings beforehand and setting it up, and and how there's so much. It knows that you are playing a game right now, and it's into facing with the console and it's making those kind of decisions. Who is this game for? Is it for the diehard fans? Is it for a new market? I, this game got me into role-playing games. I wasn't into mm. role-playing games at all and I actually fell in love with space. The soundtrack is incredible. The, the world building is so amazing and I just wanted to find out more about what was happening in this universe and I kind of got sucked in. I would never have wanted to play a game like this in general but the story is just so interesting that you just want to find out. You want to find out the story of Rex and you want to find out the story of your crewmen Members. And as you go along, immersion, yeah, this immersion. And as you go through the universe, <gasps> she's got big hair. She's got big hair. She's got big hair. Yeah, we got, we, you know, you know, that's oh. what we did. We made it. We gave it pink hair. It um, looks spectacular, so buddy. This, so this is the actual ship right now. And these crew members we recruit as we go through the galaxy, and they all have their own individual stories. We can go on missions with them and help them with their families, and then obviously save the universe. No spoilers. Oh, ten out of ten for this game. I'm going to give it because it just looks absolutely amazing. Ten out of ten for this TV because it is absolutely amazing. And ten out of ten for our next recipe be in the kitchen. Go, go, go. Sure. All right, so here's a recipe that's going to give you a mass effect when it comes to your taste buds. So have you ever craved a sweet baked treat, but you don't have an oven? Uh, then satisfy your sweet tooth craving with our Clover Classic No Bake Custard Buns. Yummy! This fluffy delights, they're all made on the stovetop and make the perfect tea time treat. And to help me out with this recipe, we've got Michaela back in the kitchen. I'm excited to cook with you, by the way. <laughs> it's our first time. It's because you're equally crazy. Yes, like. equally at equal height as well, which works so, so much better. You wish I'm taller. The, are you a little... A little bit. That's yeah. fine. Okay, so <laughs> talk to me, Michaela. How are we going to make these? Because I think cool. when you think about buns and no oven, I think what are we going to do? Are we steaming them? Are we cooking them? How does this actually work? So we're actually going to use the stove top and do like a slight um, cook on the base of the bun. Yeah. But then you put the lid on and it steams the top and then you just flip it over last minute so both sides are like equally golden. Cool. Kind of looks like a flapjack. And then when you cut into the middle, there's just like this delicious custody filling. I'm ready. I am ready okay. for this. Okay, how are we starting off? You got a, a, a pot there ready, chef. I see there's a, We've is that ready... butter in there? Or no, a... so this is our Clover Classic oh, custard. Oh, So you're loosening it up with a bit of heat. Exactly. Beautiful, okay, what's so next? So then we have some corn flour, some milk, and you just want to combine the two. Okay. Uh, just so this helps to thicken the custard even more. I got you. I know corn flour can be a bit finicky to work with. There are some things, especially when you cook it down in a pan. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you have to be a little bit more careful with that heat-wise. Exactly. And if you don't cook it out correctly, then you get lumps. Yes. So you kind of just want to dissolve the corn flour into the milk correctly. See, we have a smooth texture. Perfect. 
And then you grab your spatula and you just pour it in. And you keep mixing this on the stove top until it thickens up so that it becomes quite a pliable texture that we can just put inside the buns. Oh, that is so cool. I'm actually fascinated to find out how the, that's gonna go inside a bun. I'm excited. And I see I've got some things around here. On my station, I'm excited. What am I doing here, Chef? Am I doing, do am I doing really some mixing? Do you really think I'm gonna let you do it? Oh, never mind. It's fine. You can do your thing, it's okay. I'm gonna stand aside. Okay, yes, yes, So, yeah. in this bowl, we have some flour. If all right. you could add all of these ingredients. Okay. Uh, into there, that would be great. Okay, cool. I got so you covered. Do so dry first. Dry first, and then we can go. Okay, cool. So anything that looks dry. So that's some yeast. Yes. Okay, throw that in there. Yeah, it's throwing the yeast in. Then we got salt. Can see okay, salt. Okay, so actually, there. just wait a second with the salt. Do the sugar first. Sugar first. Got you. So salt actually kills yeast. Um, How's that for a chef tip? Didn't see that coming. Look at yeah. that. Sugar helps the yeast to bloom. I have heard of that when trying to make home kombucha. You make kombucha. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes when I get bored, then I do that. Mm. You have okay, to do the scooby the and everything. It's pretty cool. Okay, salt goes in over there. Scooby. What is a scooby? A scooby is like your starter for the fermentation process for your okay. kombucha. But then again, it's not a kombucha recipe. I just thought I'd let you know. Um, oh. That's where I've, I've seen that, that sugar and yeast connection before. It's yeah. great. Okay, great stuff. So now and we now add the, wedding the wish. Ingredients. I don't want to throw too much. So we have some milk, some water, and some eggs. So this is an enriched dough, which All means right. that it's not just consisting of um, flour, water, yeast, and salt. We're adding Great. some sugar into it, some eggs, and then once this is all combined, we're gonna incorporate some butter. Oh, I love butter. So it's like a brioche base, basically. And what but are we looking much. for? We're looking, are we going super smooth with this? this so this dough? you just wanna like combine. All right. Actually might be a bit wet at the moment. No, it's all good. I think it's gonna come together. I'm hopeful. I think that that's the thing about baking. Even though we're not technically baking, we are gonna do a bit of panning, if that's the thing. Yes. Panning and steaming. I, I, I just, I feel like it's gonna work out. I have a good, a good feeling about this. Okay, so. Right. Seeing as you want it to be so um, hands-on, you get to stick your hands in there and just mix it all together while I turn the stove top oh, on. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, um, wow. I never knew I'm gonna go in here. So I'm just gonna do, okay, that's, that's actually not sticky at all. I know, that's, right? That's, that's not sticky at all. In fact, <laughs> that's not. Because, see, this is where I would love some more flour. Um, <laughs> so that's I'll, great. I'm gonna flour the top for you okay. and then just throw the additional Thank in there. Thank you so much. See, this is what I was looking for, because I was hoping that you'd go here. And this is what I, what I love about baking, is that you actually really can get your, your hands dirty, so to speak, and then also, it's fun for the entire family when you are incorporating everything. Except okay, you cool. don't want to do this around the kids. No, because then just things everywhere. get thrown around. And that's crazy, okay. So, if you could just dump it out onto the work surface okay, for us. Okay, let's do that over there. Perfect. shabba -da. Great. <laughs> okay, I did shove it up. You have to do a shove it up. You did That's shove it up. You have to do a <laughs> It's the one and only Clover Classic Baked. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. This is this is very wet. Yes, it's fine. But the thing is, we know because I have a recipe available on ExpressoShow.com, and also we have a recap. So this is where they actually get it right. <laughs> but for for the sake of us and me saying hi to you with dough in my hand at the moment, I think it's very very cool to actually do this and get it right. And then of course you're going to add butter for I love this word more unctuousness. Oh, thank you. You're is welcome. that your word of the day? It's my today. word of the day. Unctuousness, <laughs> and it, it is good. So once we've so done this, so technically, when this goes right, yes, then the texture of this needs to be a slightly smoother, more together dough. Great. Actually, you got some of the, the yes, that's exactly the this one. Power of TV, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we did that earlier. Boom! We right clicked earlier. our fingers, and here's one. Yes, oh, great. And then, yeah. So do you take the mixture and put them into little pockets in those? Basically, so oh, then wow. you'll separate this into balls. Yes. Uh, Let's see how um, that little process... Oh, never mind. So that's going to be in the recap. Uh, there we go. At the moment. We're getting this done. It's going to be fantastic. And then actually okay. do one-handed. One-handed is to show off to, you know, to guests and family members as you go <laughs> along. Um, okay. So here we go. Perfect. And then you do the... Beautiful. Then, and you're going to okay. pour that in the middle there somehow. Yes. So when your custard has thickened up as Perfect. well, you'll put it in the middle and just pinch all the bits together like a dumpling, you know, <laughs> yes, yes. That, exactly that. And then you're going to put it into the pan. And you know, see, there we go. There's a cute little dumpling with that nothing in cool. it. But um, magic of TV, we yes. have some prepped ones. And yeah. then you're going to do it there and then and it comes then out beautifully. And then you put them into a dry pan. You don't want to put any oil there, otherwise okay. you're going to get too much of a crisp and a char. And then like, this is what happens. And you put the lid on and you just allow steam. them to steam. Perfect. Yeah. 
You know, Michaela, that was absolutely incredible. And I know that, you know, you, the thing is, we actually gave you a scenario where it's not going to actually work out, but we've got some steps for you. So that's a treat. Get the recipe. Head on over to expressoshow.com. And if you missed the steps, then stay tuned for this recap. I feel like we should hide. is watering so let's uh, now get some wind going through there by singing just a little bit we've been enjoying getting to know the awesome indie rock band indie dog this morning but it's time for some fun and games and a bit of a challenge as we play a round of the infamous music match game and here's how it works I'm gonna give our players a word and then they need to sing an existing and I stress existing song please don't make one up that features that word in the lyrics and you you guys can play along at home. Mark, Dylan, you guys seem quietly confident about this. Oof. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Do they ever let you sing, Mark? No. Being on the job? But no. I think this will be the, the start yeah. of something, hopefully. Yeah. Chance, yeah. Man. Are it's you both to... competitive? Reasonably mm. so, yeah. Really? Rhythm section, so we have to... I think after the first question, I'll be able to see, like, okay. can I win at this? Maybe just, not. Just gel this. Yeah. It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. No, it's going to be awesome. Um, and remember, when you fail, Okay, it's great entertainment <laughs> value for us. You don't necessarily have to get it right every right, time, but let's have a little fun. bit of fun. Okay, okay, Mark, I'm going to start with you. Sweet. All right? Drummer boy. The first word that I need you to sing a line of a song using is light. Light. <laughs> uh, the only one I can think of is the weekend blind lights. So, this city's cold and empty. No one around to judge me. I can't remember if there's a word light in it, but that's... Uh, yeah. you, you kind of reached in, you <laughs> yeah. did the thing, and the, the light. Uh, I, I love like the song. Though. I love the song. <laughs> I loved your tone. Okay, I'm going to give you a point. Yes. Absolutely awesome. Well done. Oh. All right, Del, Deli, Deli oh, Poo. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your word is here. Here. And like, Ooh. as in right over here. Right here. Yeah. Okay. I'm here for you whenever you need to see what I believe is me. Beautiful, <laughs> that's, man. That's seal. That's seal. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I couldn't tell. Yeah, um. yeah I, know, I know. I know. Back on focus. Absolutely beautiful, <laughs> man. Point, point, boom. All right, Mark comes back to you with the word back. Uh. Back streets, back. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're going to kick you out of the band, but yeah, yeah, really, that was really cool. Oh, this one. Mm. Tears. Tears. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm going to lie, that's a hard one. Yeah, it is um, a hard one, man. Let's say, I think it's Ariana Grande. It okay. goes, all of your tears in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that's a real song. <laughs> I have no idea. But I love it, man. I love it. I'm going to give you a half no a idea. point. A half no a point idea. for that one. Uh, this is quite a sweet one. Friend. Um, uh, you got a friend in me. Go. Yeah. There we go. There we you go. You got a friend in me. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's what I got. Oh, no, I love it. I love it. I'll take it, man. You're getting some tough ones, dude. Okay. Let's Dilly see. poo. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> ready. I'm ready. Change. Change. Can I use change a ling from the doors? It's Why not? Change Try it. Try it and let's see. I'm a change a ling. See me change. Dun, 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 something like that. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, a song. Added, it's added a music. song, yeah. You added it's, guitars. <laughs> that's what I'm good at. <laughs> in there, vocally, I'll give you the point. I love it. Um, and, ooh. 
Oh, it's getting saucy now. We're going to find out a lot about you, my friend, right now. The word is lover. Lover. Oh, wow. Come on, lover boy. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, I don't know, man. There's no love in your life, man. <laughs> yeah, I have to be my own lover. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's the song. I'm sure there's a song about it. Yeah, well, I think I'll we, take can that we have a sound? Can we have a sound? Like, uh, 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 uh. Um, there we go. Perfect, exactly. Um, let's try this one. Shake. Um, what's that song, man? Shake it up. Shake it up. OK, I'll take that. Shake it up, shake it up, shake, shake, shake. It's, it's shake. actually shake it off. Well, shake it off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to give you another half a point. Half a point. Add it to the I'm other half a point, you get one point. Okay, and to close it off, let's see if you can get this one. It is time. Time. Okay. Oh, I know there. Are you coming again? Time to help after us. time. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, thanks for being handy. All right, so can I get half a point for that? No, dude. You Come can't. on, like, um, part of the okay, same so band. who are we going to give it to? As, as the vocalist in the band? Uh, I feel like the drums need some. Uh, the drums need some representation. Okay, yeah, all right. I'll, okay. I'll give it to Mark. We're going to give it win. to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I see how it is. I see how it is. I see how it is. Will they Don't let worry. him sing? Probably not. Uh, probably not <laughs> after that, but you guys were worthy champions. Thank you so much for playing along. We're going to let them do what they do best in just a moment. They are going to be performing Indie Dogger here to blow your mind. Stick around. So, we've had classic fashion from Timby. Classic cars, thanks, Chad. And we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? <laughs> Classic. A classic range from Clover. Timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back, everybody. Last few minutes here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. What an amazing morning it has been with performances from indie rock band Indie Dog, and they're taking the Express stage once more with their track Harvey and the Girl. So, guys, take it away.
to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters made with love by Clover another feel good production